Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Metacast podcast. That's the podcast that improves itself, improves our self, and improves the self in general. Uh, tonight, we are going to do um, something a little different for us. Um, it is a, um, but I think it's, I think the times call for it. I think it's, I think it's something that, um, like we talked about this when we were doing our off air, or excuse me, our on air planning combo, or Jesus. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading the, I'm reading chat at the same time as trying to talk our off air, like planning session that, um, it, I, I feel like to avoid this subject and not talk about it is like a decision within itself that it's like, I think it's almost unavoidable that we do. We do need to discuss what's, what's going on in the world right now. The, um, the global pandemic we're, we're experiencing, which is, um, the, the, the COVID-19 virus or, or novel coronavirus. So, uh, we have prepared, um, uh, some information and uh, basically the the meat of what we're doing here is experience um, trying to delve into the the human impact and talk to um, talk to some some uh, friends coworkers and just people that we know about um, how how their life has changed over the past few months. So the um, well, first of all, I mean introductions. How are how are you feeling? I know you're feeling a little bit under the weather earlier. You got to rest a little bit. Are you still like? I mean, is your throat feeling any better, or what's what's going on? My throat feels like hell. It looks like hell. It doesn't sound any worse than usual. That is true. Yeah. I just I just got like body aches and stuff, like headache, yeah. things like that. No fever though. Temperature's normal. Good, good. Um, and oh, no, can we like... can we start like a swear jar for this episode? Oh, you have sure. to do ten push-ups every time you say unprecedented. Oh no. All right, well that's going to bring us to the end of this episode. <laughs> All right, yeah, we we can try we'll try to avoid that word. I feel like that word is just going to come up it's a lot though. Th- but it's getting thrown around so much these days. And it's like guys, synonyms. Sy- you know what here, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to open up an online thesaurus. I I was literally just doing the same thing. <laughs> I want other words <laughs> for unprecedented, please. Oh, you just said it. Oh fuck. Okay, we'll we'll give it a pass. I already said it. I said it once. You said it once. True. Now we're even. Everybody okay. gets one, right? All right. Yeah, this is uh, this is without parallel. It is uh it is extraordinary. It's freakish. We would say unheard of. I would call this unequaled. We're going to we're going to run out of synonyms. We're going to use all yeah, of them really and then the rest of the episode is like, <laughs> "Oh fuck." That's but, like, yeah, we just have to say them all again. Um but yes, yeah, I mean, it's... so first things first, we, we do just want to like talk about basics. So what, what, is, what is actually going on? How much do we know about, about, wh- about what we're experiencing? And I feel like really, uh, I mean, the answer is kind of, it's not a lot. There's, there's some yeah. things we know and there's, there's a lot that we don't know. Yeah, like I think anything, that if you listen to anyone that actually knows what they're talking about, most of them will say, this is what we know about this other similar thing. But we don't necessarily know if that's true for this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, the other thing is, is there? There's actually still. I was trying to look up different things about symptoms, and there's like something like, you know, like you got what is it? Fever, tiredness, dry cough are the common ones. Mm-hmm. Shortness of breath is one, but not necessarily a common one. There's aches and pains, sore throat, and some people actually experience diarrhea, nausea, or runny nose. But I was actually reading something, I, I forget what website it was on, it was on like a Medline maybe, where they were saying it actually takes a while to create diagnostic criteria yeah. for any disease. Mm-hmm. So with this being as new as it is, like that's not necessarily an inclusive or exhaustive list. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And is, are you getting tired of Anthony Fauci yet? <laughs> Who is, hold on, I don't mean, oh, no, 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 the CDC guy? That guy's no. all over the place. No, no I'm no. not tired of him. I think, I'm glad that he's, you know, out there, like, trying to talk in a credible and um, uh, meaningful, knowledgeable fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, man, the guy's all over the place. Like, actually, I kind of want to look up uh, his Google statistics. <laughs> did you look up the Google statistics for coronavirus? I did not, no. That would be, an, I would, let me see the Google analytics for that. I mean, I'm sure that um, trending inside 250%. Where's the graph? Yeah. Oh, wow. Of course, it's like only showing the past like recent bit. I mean, well, I'm sure this is something that was not very well searched for years and years and years, even though there have been many, um, many coronaviruses that we have um, 
uh, dealt with in the past. I'll be muting my mic a lot to sneeze. Oh. No worries. <laughs> I will, we appreciate it. It's better. It's better than not muting it, though. Yeah. Uh, and if you're watching us on YouTube, you'll notice I sneezed into my sleeve <laughs> slash shoulder slash flexed elbow. Yeah, and that that I mean that is the way to do it. That is one of the one of the things we're supposed to be doing. Um, I was taught to do that as a kid, just because my mom's a nurse. So I've <laughs> I've always done that, just because like I'd get reprimanded if I didn't. Exactly. It, yeah, I I I grew up with a, with a nurse as well, so I I I definitely understand that. I'm sorry. So um yeah. so getting getting to like the the basics that we were going to cover here. There's a there's a fact sheet that um which kind of goes over like some of the first like um like a really rudimentary stuff just that i mean the coronavirus disease 2019 which is abbreviated to covid19 um it's a respiratory illness that can spread from person to person um the virus that causes it was first identified during an investigation into an outbreak in wuhan china so that is the um as far as we know the 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 first case um which i get what would people call patient zero and uh-huh. um the i guess it's primarily being spread just through um uh like i mean well i don't want to say just open air but but um respiratory methods is it what is the right well, way to say that the the uh, i've i listened to several different um briefs that anthony fauci did on it and he called it specifically large droplet transmission okay okay or person to person contact yeah he he actually differentiated that between small droplet and small droplet uh, is what he said that they defined as airborne. And that oh. doesn't mean that it can, it can survive or spread across like unbelievably long distances. It was something like, I don't know, 70 yards or some shit. I forget what he said exactly. Hmm. Um, but it's, he, he called it large droplet transmission. So I guess that's um, the, the reason like, for like a six foot barrier being like something yeah, that would actually work. He said that, that typically those will actually go six feet and then kind of fall because of gravity um, or they'll begin to fall. That least. actually makes a lot of sense. Okay, good. Um, and then, yeah, as, as we touched on, I guess the, the main symptoms, at least according to, um, I think it's cdc.gov. Yeah. Um, fever, cough, and shortness of breath are the, are the only three that it mentions here. But as you said, it takes a while to really build up uh, the, the profile for knowing what all the symptoms are. So we, I guess they're like, at least these have been consistent among a, a large number of, of people testing positive. But as you're saying, like there are other people experiencing other symptoms. So that's one of the other things that we really just don't know yet. Um, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I guess com- complications. I guess a lot of pa- um, some patients are ending up with a pneumonia in both long- both lungs. I have been hearing a lot of the respiratory damage that it has been causing to lungs. Um, it seems that even when the patients recover and are testing negative, the damage may be permanent. Yep. Yeah, that's not so good. I read that too. Yeah, it's it, uh, yeah very. Uh, I mean, definitely like you know, it, I I don't like to. Um, I don't like to cause panic, of course. There's, you know, like, but at the same time, I think that being aware of of danger is is a good thing. So, like, we're not we're not here to to scare anyone by by any yeah. means. Like, that is and, not the goal. But and you know, there's the way that the way that illnesses, any number of illnesses, affect people. Like, I know people that can have a cold and like, you know, put on a mask and go work out at the gym and have absolutely no problem the whole time they have one. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't compromise the recovery time at all. And I know other people that will just be fucking bedridden for like three to four days with just a cold. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you know, that once again, like, so we're, we don't want to cause panic, but that's also not me making light of it either. Exactly. That, you know, there's, it's just a per people are very different. Their immune systems are different. Their degree of overall health is different. Um, their their history of other infections is also different you know their current like comorbids other conditions they have it's all different so i mean at this point you know we've seen i mean I, th- that's the problem is that there there isn't enough data yet yeah w- there isn't enough data to really uh determine a whole lot of anything really um but yeah based i mean the data we have is basically that um trying to limit contact as much as possible will of course help slow the spread of a virus of, of any virus and that's i mean really that's kind of it just comes down to preventative measures that 
yeah. if we don't fully understand the best thing to do is is at this point avoid it try to slow that try to try to flatten the curve as as the uh, the popular saying is <laughs> i mean it's hey <laughs> the cool thing is is everybody knows what you mean when you say it which is kind of cool yes and, you know that, that is um, interesting because i remember i like i mean i guess this would have been probably right around a month ago having a discussion with someone that like that idea had not at all occurred to them it was like it was something that i had read on like a couple a couple sites and it wasn't like a very a widespread thing yet where people understood that it's like oh yeah it does make sense to not just overbear the health system right now and like it was just hearing people say this like you know the mentality was almost like i'm young it, it doesn't matter if i get it I'll, I'll get you know i'll get over it um not yeah. like not taking into consideration like first of all others and second of all just literally even though you're young and you may survive it, there's a very good chance you could need medical assistance and you could actually be someone taking up a bed at a, at a hospital that we, um, according to the best knowledge right now, maybe don't have the number that we need of. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's hospital capacity and then there's like, you know, outbreaks. You know, there's also like the six lane highways in LA that are completely packed <laughs> at certain parts of the day yeah um just because you know they're not they're not necessarily built for everybody in the entire freaking city and surrounding area to be on them at one time um did you did you read anything or see anything about possible treatments or any of the companies that are working on stuff i i have heard that there are at least i mean there's at least one lab working on a um a vaccine and they feel like they're getting towards um actually starting to test it but that's the that's the most that i've heard did you uh did you see any of this uh speculation of hydroxychloroquine or um hydroxychloroquine used in con conjunction with azithromycin? No, I haven't. No. That is that's uh, new. Apparently to me. apparently some group they did like a small study in France with it and they're supposed to be doing some trials, just trials in the United States. Mm -hmm. Hydroxychloroquine is not an accepted treatment for it. Yeah. <laughs> and well, that's the big thing this like, link is pointing out here is uh, yeah. on the CDC. There, there is no known treatment yeah. as of yet. You can, right. you can attend, like, you know, but get medical attention for symptoms, but that's it. I have like a, a list of, this is not an exhaustive list. Actually, there's several other companies that I'm sure are working on stuff now, but there's companies that are, were either working on treatments um, or vaccines. There's like a whole slew. Um, uh, let's see the Entos Pharmaceuticals, University of Oxford, Roy Vant Sciences, Altimune, IMAB Biopharma, I don't know if this is pronounced Medicago or Medicago, something like that. Airway Therapeutics, Tiziana, Life Sciences, Oyogen, Beyond Spring. There's like a bunch of companies that are actually working on different types of stuff. The thing you said about lasting uh, lung damage, um, I think one of these companies is actually working on something to treat um, to treat those effects possibly. But once again, I don't think any of these people have even started any testing on any of their stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, I think you know, it's, all, it's all theory, right? Yeah. There's been some speculation that like anecdotally people have said that like some over the counter drugs or home remedies might make this worse or make it better. Mm -hmm. There isn't really any evidence <laughs> for any of that. Yeah, that does it. That happened that with like ibuprofen, that's not right? True. It just means there's no evidence. Do what? That, that we're, that, I heard that about ibuprofen that like any yeah. sort of like anti inflammatory was causing an issue and. But, but it's yeah. it's completely anecdotal. It's like a couple of people had one, one experience with one patient. Um, yeah. or maybe even a single person. So it's funny because like usually when you talk to someone that, that knows their shit, they'll say there is no evidence for, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean that something isn't true. It just means there's no reason to believe it. doesn't yeah. mean it's not true. It's just there's no reason to believe it yet. But yeah, there's just like a lot of stuff like nobody knows for sure that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are actually a problem or not. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the thing is like the thing that I really wanted to touch on the most of this part where we talk about just the basic idea of the disease mm -hmm. is that we all need to be very aware of the fact that nothing is like cold hard fact. Every fucking jackass at work is talking to you like they're a fucking expert. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. That one person is like, all you got to do is not touch your face. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's the thing is like people keep like talking about like things that they've heard as if it's like cold hard fact. It's not necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I mean, there's some stuff that we're talking about now, like even vaguely that might turn out to be completely false later on. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's, um, it is, it is just very interesting how 
how new and how fast this has um this has all yeah. happened it's it's i mean so so the the timeline that i'm that i'm looking at here basically the first um yeah it looks like the first case the earliest date that we can point to is 17th of november 2019 which is un, i mean right under five months ago right like four hold on yeah 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 um that is like i mean the, the entire world as far as like my like day-to-day -day life for people has, has really changed over this over these past like i mean realistically in america i mean what the past six weeks basically yeah uh and for a lot of people not even that long mm -hmm. um a, a lot of people only really started taking uh, taking heed of any of this within the last like two or three weeks yeah yeah yeah, which uh, which may be um one of the reasons why uh the cases in in the U.S. are are growing, uh, the number of cases is growing way faster than than a lot of other places. That we uh, we maybe were a little little late on board to um to make the yeah. cautionary measures that we probably should have. Well, you know, we're always convinced here, and and maybe this is for another part of the uh for the discussion, but we tend to m mostly be convinced here that nothing will ever touch us, and mm -hmm. e even in the midst of having to like be stuck at home. Um, if you're fortunate enough to be somebody that, you know, is able to stay at home, this is a pretty cushy place to do it. Like, I mean, it, it's actually not even, even in the midst of like looming death and doom, like having to be stuck at home is pretty easy here. It's not yeah. quite so bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you got the resources. Um, mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That's uh, yeah. I do feel incredibly fortunate that, um, it's yeah well, was, it's not it's not a difficult thing I, I've, I've got a i've got a decent room there's, a, there's plenty of stuff that i can do here it's it's, it's not difficult for there, me just to stay here is there a single country because I, I looked at a list of countries i don't think there's a single country right now that doesn't have at least one case of this Ooh, there might be like sure a couple about. like little tiny republics here and there where is the um where's my... i cannot i should have i should have given myself a link to that data um i've got the i've got the scary map the uh the john I'll you know the, look at the scary map with all the red on it that one's fucking terrifying it, it's a little terrifying but it's not okay. i all mean right, again so yeah we don't look i think you might be Total, right no there's not a single country um so as of march 19th well actually yeah papua new guinea reported their first one on march 19th hmm. and timor leste i don't even know where the hell this is I don't even think I'm saying this right. It's another tiny country, but I mean, Papua New Guinea's tiny too. Sierra Leone has two. Okay, like, I don't really mean this any kind of way, but it is interesting because that we have always looked at communicable diseases of different kinds as being a really big problem for Africa. But if you look at the data, at least recorded cases, mm -hmm. they don't seem to have a whole lot going on there compared to the rest of the world. Which well, I think is, I mean, well, once again, like their testing methods, they may not all be able to record. Well, and also, I mean, well. we, we do see that the, um, the largest number of cases and the fastest spreading is, uh, t it tends to be in, in metropolitan areas. So in a lot yeah. of like of the more spread out countries where people are, are living, um, uh, like I'm saying, in more, more rural or more spread out areas, it may be, um, yeah, it may be a lot slower to, to progress. That is true. I like Vili. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about um. Vili is saying that there's no confirmed cases in North Korea, and according to the map, I don't see one either. But then again, I'm fine confirmed. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. Like any of the um, like all the number we're going by here are just like actual like confirmed cases, correct? Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, I don't actually, know. Like South to... Korea is the list I'm looking on. North Korea is not even on here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The scary map has no red dot for for North Korea at all. So I, that that could be. I mean, and like Philly's saying, that country is completely locked down. There is a very good chance that that, that literally, yeah. I mean, without letting anyone in, that there may not be an actual case there. Yeah. It's entirely possible that they might be the only country that doesn't have one. Mm -hmm. I mean. Maybe not indefinitely, but definitely right now. Yeah, that's crazy. I do so know. Did, did you ever play? One. Did you ever play that that browser based game? Uh, I think it was actually called Pandemic, where you would create a virus uh, and like unleash it on the world. No, I played. Um, 
uh, Plague Incorporated, mm -hmm. which was that was a smartphone game. Yeah, um, but I never played that other one. No, very similar though, but very similar. But the um, always like the the worst part was when Madagascar would get it, or or when the virus got too bad that Madagascar just closed all of its borders and you were never able to infect it. So yeah, there was a there's a running joke with Plague Incorporated that was like, take that Iceland. Mm, um, okay, it it's like Iceland and Plague Difficult to, to infect, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, and there's like, there, I mean, there's jokes associated with it. Actually, I think I might have sent you one. It's a picture of a, it's sort of a cartoony version of Jesus playing on a smartphone. And at the bottom, it shows Plague Incorporated. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, um, but I'm pretty sure it was Iceland in that one. It might have been Greenland. Um, gotcha. So as far as, far as like... Because, you know, I think that this is something that we, we've quickly realized, you know, affects everybody. Yeah. Um, but I guess, you know, the the urban areas really are going to be the ones where this is the most we have the most to uh, deal with. Yeah. Um, but and, you know, it's like as far as like what we can do, we've you know, we already talked to we talked about that together, that it's pretty much that whole five thing. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Which which what are the what are the five? What is the suggestions? Uh, we gotta wash our hands. You gotta cough into your elbow or uh, or your sleeve, shoulder, whatever. Mm -hmm. Don't touch your face. Keep your distance three to six feet, preferably six, and stay home if you can do it. Okay. Hands, elbow, face, space, home. Done. H e f. -A there's no like, there's no nice <laughs> moniker for that, is there? Or, or what is it? Hefsh. Hefsh. Okay. Yeah. Just, just guys, remember hefsh. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was interesting because I was uh, I was actually uh, I did a couple a little bit of research on the whole mask thing, because we talked mm -hmm. about people reusing stuff because yeah. of like shortages with the equipment. Um, and apparently it's not necessarily a bad thing to reuse masks. Mm -hmm. It's just the problem is that if that mask gets droplets on it and an infected person belong that those droplets belong to an infected person well then that's a problem yeah that reusing them isn't necessarily a bad thing if they're not contaminated but i don't think you actually know if they are or not exactly yeah so i don't know if they have a thing where it's like you know somebody coughs on you that you know is infected then do you dispose of the mask like i don't know if that's a thing that that's happening as they're being reused but you know apparently though like a mask isn't necessarily going to keep you 100 percent protected oh of course um, yeah it's like it's like body armor like you can wear like a, a what they they call it bulletproof mm -hmm. a bulletproof vest but if you get shot you're going to get knocked on your ass have an enormous bruise yep um so it's like you're not 100 percent safe with a mask but it's better than nothing i think we all saw johnny knoxville do it right and you get or no the, hold on yeah Is i'm he wear, no sure. I'm, I'm actually i'm thinking of the the riot shotgun thing oh yeah with the bean bags yeah yeah, yeah. crazy yeah yeah i but don't know I, if he actually I wore like somebody a... on one of those shows did that at one point i don't think it was johnny knoxville i don't think it was jackass either yeah i feel like it was um, one of the like the darker <laughs> like a little like more um like, yeah <laughs> Um, so, I mean, have, have we touched on all the stuff that we wanted to about the disease itself? Um, I believe so. I mean, as far as like a, as a natural conversation goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. so le moving on to now, like the, I mean, like, like we pointed out, there's not a lot that we do know. We, um, mm -hmm. I think we've covered the bases that we know now what we really want to explore is how this is impacting us, how, how this affects us, what, what is actually going on in our lives. So what, like, what to you do you feel like is the, the, the biggest impact? Like, where, where do you think we're feeling this the most? Uh, I, at least for me and, you know, a lot of the people that I know, um, I think a lot of it is just social isolation. A lot of it has little to do with the disease itself. Hmm. Um, yeah, people are freaked out. People are scared. They don't want to get exposed. They don't want to expose people in their family. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, at least, it's, uh, it's, it's more just being... Um, <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> i'm gonna drink some water real quick uh it's Which... more just being stuck in my apartment all the time and not really feeling like feeling like i can do much and like kind of losing my normal routine i think that's what it's like for most people that most people are really um are really feeling it that way that it's that we are generally speaking pretty social creatures and a lot of things we do are very social things we gather in large groups 
you know, sporting events, races, you know, rock concerts, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just like what we do, you know, New Year's Eve happens, there's a massive pile of people in Times Square. And, and it's just what we do gathering in groups is part of what's helped us survive as long as we have. Um, so it's really difficult for me, at least to be, you know, very isolated and you know uh like my girlfriend and i have decided pretty much not to see each other until until numbers start coming down pretty much like we're just not going to hang out at all um and that's not so much fun yeah i agree there i mean there is a lot of sacrifice that that um we're having to do as far as uh the social side of things um i do think it, interestingly for me it, it's Stuff has not changed a lot in my life in that regard. I feel like, like, you know, without making too much light of the situation, it's like, I feel like I've kind of been training for, for this for a long time. It, like, as far as like being, you know, I spent a lot of my time just gaming. Most of my interaction with others is, is digital. Um, and then basically, you know, starting in on August 27th of 2019, I, I, I really started focusing on, on being home a lot. Uh, that's when WoW Classic came out. And then, of course, the past, like, few months, um, I, was, I was ranking in WoW Classic, and that was literally not leaving my house at all. So it's literally, like, it is kind of funny that, like, at, at, right as I get done ranking, and the world um, is there that I could actually go out, a global pandemic happens, and, and basically I need to revert to the behavior that I had been doing. Yeah. <laughs> but at like, the same time, like, it's oh, like... I can do that. <laughs> yeah, but, but at the same time, it's like, it, um, that feeling that you're talking about I don't actually, I don't feel that whatsoever. This is like, it's actually just kind of life as usual for me as, as far as that goes, which is, I mean, a little bit of a benefit, I guess. <clears throat> hey, I'm, look, my throat's killing me, man. I'll be right oh, back. Fine. I'm going to get some like throat spray real quick. Sure. I'll, I'll... Yeah, you're fine. All right. So yeah, the, so the, psych, so the psychological impact is, um, there's multiple ways to look at it. It is, um, there's definitely a lot of people feeling loneliness, feeling the, uh, what is the, the term? Cabin fever, I think is what people say, where um, even though you're, you're in an area that you're normally used to, most people, you know, they're in their homes, a place they spend a lot of time, there's, um, there's a difference when leaving is not an option. And I think when that option is taken off the table, your, your brain, like, processes the situation and, and sees um, what it's in in a very, very different light. Excuse me. And I think that that is, um, I think that that's what's giving people a lot of problems. Um, let's see, I do want to address what, um, what someone said in, in chat. Uh, the big dog was saying that they do think that a mask can protect you from the droplets. Interesting. I see from what I've read, I, I don't know if there's a, a 100% at all. And, um, I would, I'd, this goes to just like we were talking about at the beginning. There's still so much that is, that is unknown. And I would say that it's, you still want to do whatever you can to try to protect yourself. Whether or not, uh, you know, the, whether or not there's some guarantee that, that wearing a mask is, is going to be like 100% protection from droplets. I, w I would always just say, I guess, better safe than sorry, maybe, is the way that I, the way that I look at it. Yeah, exactly. Really, that is one thing that I've um, tried to look at is... Uh, making sure so i do have an, an n95 n95 mask that i've worn anytime i've had to go out places and um making sure that i'm only touching the edges not touching like where droplets would, would really be make sure i'm like putting it on the right way to when i take it off putting it into this plastic bag and then trying to like um try, trying to to sterilize it again as best as possible with things like also being just very conscious of when outside in the world, what surfaces I'm touching, when I can consider my hands clean versus dirty and just things like that. It's been, um, I mean, that's another thing that I feel like some of my training in the past has, has, um, uh, has helped me with is like, you know, taking a, a bloodborne pathogen class is, um, even though that has to deal with like, you know, the spread of diseases through blood, it's still like there, you learn about, um, when surfaces are dirty, when hands are dirty, when things like that, working in restaurants, knowing when to wash your hands again after touching certain things, just being conscious of what could be on your hands. I, th I think it's one thing that people really, really need to, um, really need to be doing in, in times like this. Um, the, um, the other psychological impacts, though, I feel like a lot of it is going to come from 
what's going on in the media. And I, I mean, honestly, I feel like we are part of it too, even though, you know, we don't have a, a large viewership or anything. It's not, not like CNN or Fox as far as like the, the impact that they have. But just by trying to make sure people are as informed as possible, it does kind of spread a little bit of panic and a little bit of, a little bit of fear. Which, in all reality, fear is... It's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Fear is a, fear is a survival... Um, a survival instinct. It, it, it has helped us get to where we are at this point in our species. I think if our, if our ancestors a long time ago didn't have fear, if that, if that was not a trait that was, that was in the, the, the mammal kingdom, um, that's not the right words, the animal kingdom, uh, I don't think we would have made it this far. I think that fear is, fear is very valuable. However, fear can, like with anything, there, there needs to be a balance. And, and taken to an extreme, fear can be a very bad thing. I think that we've seen the effects of that with just the, um, the panic buying and the stuff that's happened where, I mean, like, like at the very beginning of, of uh, everything going on, toilet paper completely disappearing from shelves pretty much around the entire country. That to me, I, I mean, I understand people wanting to be prepared if, I mean, if, they, if what's going on right now were to go on, of course, being stuck at home, you want to have the necessities, things that are um, non-perishable like that. You buy toilet paper, it's just going to sit on your shelves. It's not going to go bad. That kind of stuff makes sense. But there is a, a herd mentality that happens and just a, a rush to everyone do the same thing. And um, that is, that can become a very scary thing when th we look at the weak points in our supply chain and how literally everything we do now is um, like just in time ordering. We don't have like, big stockpiles of things just sitting, waiting for, um, you know, for, for any sort of like, uh, um, increased demand. We basically just function right at the margin of here's what our normal demand is. Let's supply this amount. And when that demand changes, we see what we're seeing now of just mass shortages. And, um, when the mass shortages are compounded by literally, you know, <laughs> the entire population being told to to, to stay at home and, and lots of businesses closing and lots of businesses, you know, um, not, not being, if they are still open, not being fully staffed there, I think that also stresses the entire supply chain and everything at the same time. So I think we're seeing two compounding, um, effects on top of each other that is causing, uh, causing a lot of issues for a lot of people. The, um, the other thing that I've noticed that is somewhat interesting to me is the, um, we always kind of have a nature to make things into jokes and to meme about things. And I'm not, I'm not disliking that at all. I, I, I love, I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, of any, any form of meme on, memes online. Um, I do feel like sometimes joking about something too much can normalize it and maybe play down the seriousness of something. So there can, there can be a detriment to it. However, I think that that's how we cope with things a lot. As humans, I think that there's the vast majority of people when something um, serious or something dangerous or something bad is going on with them. I think one of the best ways that they are able to cope does come down to comedy. And I forget, I think it was actually a meme that I saw that, that spread this, this idea of memes. But um, I love the, the comparison that has been made and that I'm realizing between um, old nursery rhymes from the plague times. And like the memes that we post today, I feel like growing up, I always wondered why so many of those like the little nursery rhymes sounded super dark. And like, if you look into the, what the lyrics are about, they're, they're pretty depressing and pretty dark. Um, but it's like living through that time. I think that's, I think that's what humanity does. I think that's how we cope. And, and I think it works. Um, I just, I do think that there is a, a balance that we need to strike, of course, and find that, um, sometimes joking a little too much about things can um it can can play down this the seriousness but welcome back yo you... so we're talking about the humor part mm -hmm. yeah i just yeah. i basically went through the entire just the psychological impact section but... oh cool yeah um so okay yeah and I do think, I well, I, I didn't the, touch on the, uh, um, the, the app change usage, which I did want to show these statistics. I do think this is very interesting. 
Oh yeah, that is interesting because it's funny because a lot of people that would never touch any of the a lot of the social networking or communications or um, group chat like stuff have like been all over it recently because everyone seems to be so like lonely and such. Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't know because uh, I heard you mentioning that normalizing things with humor, but it is important to try to use it as a coping mechanism too. But also, you know, we don't want to you know make it seem like it's not a big deal. Yeah, which I think I think that's one of the mistakes that people make a lot is that the reason why I make jokes about cancer is not because I think it's great and it's not a big deal, but for the exact reason like it. Well, it it did seem at one point to be the single greatest threat to human survival to me, but maybe it's different now. <laughs> well, the the interesting yeah. thing too, though, and I, I like that comparison because I I completely agree. I mean, I I do think. I've talked about it before. I do think that anything is fair game to be joked about. I, I like the the marketplace of ideas. And I think that if it's a bad joke, people are going to tell you that and you're going to realize that it's just a bad joke. But um, what it comes down to to me, though, is like we're talking about with this situation specifically, there's a lot that is still unknown. And yeah. like with cancer, I don't think there's anyone debating that cancer is not serious. You can joke about it, but it's like no right. one's, but they're like with, with the situation we're yeah. in right now, there is a large, I, I shouldn't say large percentage because I haven't taken the, I haven't, I haven't talked to people. I don't know, but there are, there are people out there that don't think it's anything serious and don't think that it's anything that needs to be cared about and play like, um, memeing a little too hard or, or joking a little too much, I think is just giving those people ammo to support their belief system. In, in, in uh, some yeah. ways that's a good point yeah and it's like that kind of thing i said the other day where it was like you know being thinking that this isn't a big deal because it, it's um, a relative of the flu and the common cold is like n not being afraid of a mountain lion because it's a relative of a house cat yeah like and you could argue that a mountain lion is just a mutated house cat yeah so, i mean yeah i think I that's mean, the definition yeah that they, yeah, yeah. So it's it, it's kind of the same thing, I think that yeah, but but yeah, what, what I was showing I here that was pulled up is the um the uh, this this app House Party that it's basically you know like I mean Google Hangouts was doing this it, it, I mean it's the same thing that that other apps have done but it's kind of become the the uh, mainstay the number one uh the okay so number three across all all categories and the number one number one social networking app but it basically literally just over the past. Two weeks, basically. I mean, if you go back to yeah. March twelfth, it was down at one hundred and ninety-eight overall, and now because of because of what's going on, that that is the uh, the hallmark what people are using. Now, I guess you know what it was always it was always somewhat popular as far as social networking goes. Overall, it was nowhere near there, but it always it always had a little bit of a following as far as social networking goes. But yeah, it still shot up from. Hovering around the like twenties or thirties up to up to number one spot. So it is it is cool to see that people are making an effort to stay home and also keep up interact interaction with with people. I, I think that that's that's important and and a way to do that digitally or a way to do that safely is is great to me. I think I think that that's a very very cool thing. Yeah, I mean, I've actually gotten seven or eight notifications on House Party just now that people have been like on and off. So, <laughs> yeah, it's getting kind of annoying, actually, but it's, yeah, whatever, it's there. Um, so th I think another another major area of impact that we're really seeing is is the economic impact. And that is that is one of the things that scares me the most. I mean, I, I don't want to like, I don't feel like the sky is falling or anything, but um, I do like, you know, um, my my main like 401k is is not something that i like keep up with at all other than when i get the the monthly statement you know it's, it's like uh, my I, I forget what even what company handles it it's just through work um but i do have like money that i've personally invested in in the market that i that i keep up with an app and it's like i've had to i've had to just not check that app at all or there's two apps actually i have not, i've told myself that i'm not looking at those whatsoever over the past few weeks and it's just it's just it's bad news it doesn't it's not good and it's um i'm trying to make an effort to to not let myself really um worry about it i guess really i, I don't think there's much that i could be done at this at this point so i think that an extra stressor is just not a not a good thing yeah i mean if you can avoid it you should um and yeah it's it's funny because like a lot of a lot of us 
in regard to the economic impact tend to focus on the stock market, mainly because the stock market's rammed down everyone's throats all the time, which is hilarious because there's actually only a, a small percentage of the population that has a huge amount of assets in there. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that the, the amount of money that people have in the market isn't large relative to their total assets. Yeah. Does yeah. That makes sense. But there, there's also the fact that, you know, with arts, entertainment, recreation, like those types of jobs, like no yeah. one's working them right now. I actually looked at some uh, gross gross domestic product figures. Mm -hmm. um, the only ones I could find that had the the data displayed the way I wanted them to be was from 2018. So in the U.S., it'll probably be a little bit higher, actually, since our GDP's increased in the last two years. The arts, entertainment, recreation, accommodations, and food service, uh, they accounted for 4.1% of gross domestic product in the US. Okay. But that's $839.1 billion. Jesus. Yeah. Um, annually. That's... And then retail trade, which I don't actually think involved retail, like the actual stores. I think it was just mm. any kind of retail practice. Mm -hmm. In 2018, that was 5.5%. 5 .5%, and that was, and keep in mind, this is in billions. It was 1,132.5 billion. So yeah, it's one point. So multiply that. That's yeah. a trillion. Yeah, it's one point trillion. something trillion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Um, and I don't know. And I don't know if that because, like, you know, a lot of the retail businesses now, the online ones are actually doing quite well. Yeah. But the main thing, though, is that, um, and the number, I'm not actually going to give the dollar amount because it's obscene, but you can base it off, you can sort of extrapolate based on what I've already said. So finance, insurance, real estate, rental, and leasing. Mm. So that's 20.7% of, of, of the GDP in 2018. Okay. But if you look at that, the any of the people that are working in those jobs won't be able to pay their loans or their insurance or their mortgage or their rent. Yep. So like that in a way like affects affects people more because you know it, it affects a large part of the it's a smaller part of the people but it also affects the industries that are a larger part of our gross domestic product. It, yes. And, yeah. And I also just decided because I thought it would be interesting um sports. Yeah. A lot of people are some people want to be like, oh, whatever, big deal. You can't see your stupid basketball game. Um, shut up and play a computer game like a goddamn American or, or, you know, whatever. I don't know, whatever shit people want to talk about sports fans. But the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that sports, if you include uh, um, commentators and mm -hmm. journalists and scouts and coaches and trainers and therapists, um, they account for 456,000 jobs in the United States. Wow. That's a lot of jobs. And it's a fourteen billion dollar a year industry. Yeah, yeah. That's so big money. if you think if the NBA is not making money, then like that's a that's a problem. You know, like th that's another big part of the economy. Oh yeah. Um, well, plus but, I mean, just know, not to mention just the 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 benefit and what that gives people of a place to gather. Like I mean that that whole I mean we did like that is kind of the, yeah. the psychological impact. But yeah, like missing out on the sports thing, it is kind of. It feels not essential, but at the same time, I think it, it it plays a big role into into like the economy and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the biggest part of the economy is buying shit we don't need. So I mean, yeah. that's yep. that's how much of the that's what the economy is based on. Um, and I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but that is what the economy, at least in in our in our part, of the, I think the global economy is getting to the point where it's based on that strictly. Well, I, um, I think it's I think it's almost a good thing. It, I mean, it just it shows prosperity. If you are able yeah, to yeah. to spend money on on shit you don't actually need, that that means you're yeah. doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can, if if you have the extra money and the extra resources to be able to have like the the unnecessary or superfluous stuff or the luxurious stuff, then that is that is a a good indicator of prosperity. Yeah. Um, but have have you seen like I keep seeing these like stupid freaking headlines where it's like, will this be worse than the two thousand eight stock market crash? And like the thing is, is that it's not yet. Yeah, and it might not be, but yeah. people people's gonna do the clickety click when they see shit like that. Yes. Well, that's uh, and that, yeah. that goes back to the fear mongering thing. Yes. It's just like, in in, in some ways, I think a lot of us are being sensibly like aware. And, mm -hmm. but in other cases, I feel like, like, am I though? Am I just a victim of like clickbait and headlines and ratings? I mean, we all are to some degree, as long as, as uh, long yeah, as you are aware. like I wasn't. 
I was it's not like I wasn't before, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like but it's like as long as as you are aware like enough to realize that that is a thing, I think you've got the like the right glass like the right color glasses on to to see that bullshit when it's there. And um I, you know, I don't think it's like immediately dangerous to like click on a headbait, jeez, uh, uh, like a uh, headline that is clickbait. Um but once that starts becoming your entire world and once it it dictates your behavior in a certain way, that maybe isn't rational i think that's that's where it's yeah. a problem and you know i have actually every morning at, a, at 11 a.m they update the recorded numbers for our state mm -hmm. i do look at that every day mm -hmm. and i don't know if that's necessarily did you see they actually have an empty hospital bed count which is pretty cool i have seen that yeah yep which is kind of i, I kind of it, it's actually nice to see that we're 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 doing okay right now Yes. Well, and, and that of is of course um, if the whole if the whole fucking state ends up at the same time because let's say we've got how many empty beds do we have? We got seventy four hundred empty beds right now. In uh, in all eight, of North Carolina, it, that's the ninety four percent of hospitals that are actually reporting though. Ooh. Okay. Not not all the hospitals are actually reporting. The problem is that that's a lot of beds. There's eight fifty six in ICU, but if the whole fucking state gets sick at the same time, well, then we're fucked. And that, that's why that is, that whole like yeah. flattening thing is so important. Yep, and and that is, I think, a big thing that I've seen, at least in my experience with, um, you know, my my smaller social circle. That, um, I mean, like I've said, most of my interactions with people is is digital, but there are there's people that I interact with through the games that I play and through Discord that are a wider audience. They're in um, um, many different areas, and then a lot of people that I interact with through my like direct social media is more this actual local area, and I have seen that mentality be very different in those two crowds whenever i'm talking to people that are you know in in san francisco in new york in places that are experiencing a lot more than we are here there's a completely different mentality than the people here that it, it there's a lot that don't think it's that serious yet because we have not seen what other cities are seeing what, what other cities are going through when we're talking about those major urban hotspots like new york city they are living a completely different world than we are right now yeah, didn't they have like a like a medical ship arrive there? I have seen. Yeah, there was a like some um, massive like medical vessel. Yeah, I don't know if I, so. I've heard of um, I, th I think it was like a, a a navy ship that was basically yeah like like turned into like a, a moving hospital. I mean, they're even like in in Central Park. There are there are like what are basically field hospitals set up to to handle shit like this. It is a um, it is a a unrivaled situation that um. I mean, we, we haven't seen before, not, at least in my lifetime, which makes it, which it does make it interesting. And, and like, I, 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 I try to use the, like this, this word and this topic cautiously because I don't like, I'm not saying that I'm enjoying this. I'm not saying that, you know, at, at all, but it is interesting to see things be so different and see what, um, what we can do when, when we, need, when we're a little bit desperate like that. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, honestly, dude, like, I don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Cause I mean, a, a lot of the people that I know, like, uh, Marines, um, and, you know, soldiers, other people in the military have actually been to war. Like they'll say the same kinds of things that mm -hmm. they have seen certain sides that you think that it's such an awful and terrible thing. And it is, but you can also see sometimes other things, yeah. um, come out of it. Uh, and, you know, I, I was listening to, um, I don't know if it was DeGrasse Tyson talking to somebody. It might have been on Star Talk. I think they were. I think it was DeGrasse Tyson talking to somebody. I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about how humans are like the cockroaches of the universe. Yeah, I do remember hearing this. Yeah, like even even if we completely like destroy everything as far as the environment goes, we'll survive. We're just. It's just that it's just that fucked up that we'll destroy everything around us, but we'll we'll still keep going. Um, and you know, like I think that when you see people taking those kinds of actions to try to get out of out of a desperate situation, um, that it's it's a it's a good thing to see. It's interesting, yes. but it's also like, oh, cool! Like, look what we can look what we can do, people. Yes, it, that's um, that. Like, it it gives me um a little bit that of that hope for humanity back where I see people coming together and doing something for each other. And like, I mean, even the, uh, like the article I read about, um, breweries using like excess alcohol and after hours times to manufacture hand sanitizer. 
that is that's a really cool thing to me that it's like that's almost like the the stuff you would hear about in like world war ii when like the you know the american war machine had to be awakened and and everyone was like called to you know to to manufacture and to and to create things um with the, yeah i mean with uh calling on uh seamstresses and, and and other people that sew to make masks and things like that i think that that's like a it's 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 a really cool um display of what humanity can do whenever we need to the yeah. the sad thing is why that it goes away so quickly after things like this like mm-hmm. i think we saw the same thing in new york around 9 11 and it was just yeah. you know a few months of of that camaraderie like quickly kind of degraded back to to how we just normally act to each other yeah and you know i'm i am grateful for a common enemy it's like mm-hmm. it's like fucking independence day but there's no will smith <laughs> Like seriously, like I'm grateful yeah. for the fact that we we have a common enemy, and it's cool that that enemy doesn't have to be, well, at least in this case, it shouldn't be other cultures. It's it's something we can't see. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's a cool thing because everybody's fighting it. Yeah. And that everybody recognizes that this is the same kind of of problem for us all. Well, yeah, um, we are all in this together, except for North Korea. Yeah, like we're, we're, yeah. all, we're all we are all in this together except for for kim jong um so if i could ask you to put your economist hat on um that's right and let's use that degree <laughs> uh have you seen anything about the stimulus package yes the what do you think okay well i have all right i've i haven't i haven't seen the actual version that was passed. I looked at some of the earlier proposals that I feel like had a lot too much for for bigger businesses. Um, I do, okay, I really like that they made sure to put provisions in to prevent stock buybacks. I think that that is yeah. kind of a, like that. that's a shitty thing that happens a lot when, when companies get bailed out. It just doesn't really make sense to me. It, it seems like at, at that point, like if you're getting bailed out by the government, it doesn't make sense to be able to then use profits again to take back control of the, the yeah that, that to me just seems yeah. like a really really sketchy thing you should be helping the economy by benefiting your current investors instead of trying to eliminate them by buying buying them back up um but i mean it, it, in general though i do think that i mean of course it's it's going to help people i like i think that you know like i uh, without trying to be a perfectionist it's like to me it's 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 a good thing. Is it going to be enough for mostly most people? Probably not. Is it? But is it going to going to help? I I would I would hope so. Um, I mean the the proposal I saw it had individuals and families at the top. Yes, which is like thirty percent. It was like six hundred billion dollars. But if you think of what th- was it three hundred million people in the U.S. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much that actually ends up getting each individual. Oh, well, each, yeah, well, it's family. not like 330 eligible, like 330 million eligible. Cause like, you know, you got to take out, I think it, it. Oh yeah, that's true. It, I'm sure it's 18 and, and up, right? Or. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. I mean, any or people that, and then I don't know if it's the same with like people that have independence. I think families are supposed to get more than individuals, but you know, for me, like I, I sort of feel like I've been able to work. And if I'm still able to work during this, if I somehow get anything from it, I think I might end up just trying to help out someone that can't that can't right now. Because mm-hmm. like if I, I don't fucking need it, like what am I gonna? I mean, fine. If if I if I get like twelve hundred bucks, I'm just gonna go buy a new gun. Like yeah. what the fuck is that gonna do? You know, I'm like I'm or you know spend buy something stupid for my motorcycle. I'm I could save it, but who does that? <laughs> well, I mean, keep in mind though, just like we talked about the um one of the biggest parts of our economy is just buying shit we don't need so that like that yeah, jumpstart back into the economy is like even though it seems like a frivolous purchase it is actually like you know you you are yeah. putting that money into a small business's hand at, at, a, at a certain point and that's going to go somewhere else then but yeah that is true um assuming that i'm yeah i probably would end up at a small business for that kind of purchase oh yeah you're not gonna you're um, not gonna go buy a gun at walmart right fuck no uh <laughs> hell no or even or even um, dicks right <laughs> Oh, Dick's Sporting Goods. I thought yeah, you were no. saying. I was like, is it, where's the Dick section in Walmart? You're not going to go buy a Dick at Walmart, right? No, but yeah. No, like, no, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even go to a sporting goods store. No, I, for most of those purchases, I am going to go to like a, a mom and pop shop. Usually there's a couple good ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing that I found interesting is it seemed like public services were going to get the least. Yes, that is the, the like, smallest amount. Yeah, 9%. 
which I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, yeah. See, I don't know how I, I feel about large corporations being the second. I mean, I. Yeah. And then, because I, I recognize that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm. Yeah. I'm mostly worried about the small businesses. I think that there's a lot of large corporations. I it maybe it may be a bias on my part, but I, I just don't feel like they're really going to be struggling that much through this. Of course, I mean every business yeah. is feeling it. However, it's like the small businesses. I feel like are uh, there's a lot that are in the danger of like depending on how long this goes, they may not be able to reopen their doors. Depending on yeah. like if there's really only one one payout and they get i mean i, I do know that they've talked about the the 350 billion that's that's in new loans that's supposed to be basically like interest free and um i mean which is which is a very good thing however at a certain point when you're you know already behind on rent and then you've got a loan and then you try to reopen your doors and it, th there may be a possibility there's a lot of businesses that we just don't see bounce back from this yeah uh, and there's not a lot of small businesses that just have cash on hand um, exactly and a lot of larger businesses do they've got cash that they'll be fine for a certain period of time mm -hmm. and <clears throat> so long as they haven't leveraged too much debt but yeah i mean i, I kind of feel like the small businesses the ones that are going to be a lot more fucked as far as as this goes and yeah, yeah i mean that and the part of me like the like the laissez-faire kind of capitalist in me mm -hmm. kind of wants to say let the big businesses perish like, I mean, if you can't keep up, like that to me is like, that to me is like a betrayal of true capitalism. Like, yeah, I, I understand I agree. that like, I understand that like some businesses that if they collapse that a lot of jobs will be threatened. But I also think that, that the companies that do survive, um, I, I think that like good things can come out of the out of the ashes so to speak Do, yeah. we were talking about the movie the fifth element earlier yeah the little bad guy dude that has the corporation that like drops the thing on the ground and breaks it yeah yeah and he says and then out of this chaos all these things happen and then like there's all these little robots that come out to clean it up yep yep like that's what i kind of feel like i think that that if everything goes completely to hell for a few a few companies um that there, there will be other things that there will be uh, people with entrepreneurial type of abilities mm -hmm. that will see markets and and they'll fill the gaps and they'll fill the the spots and you know i don't know maybe maybe i'm speaking out of complete ignorance but. i mean it, it does depend though cause, i mean like specifically the the one industry that it points to on the graph that i'm looking at is like the airline industry and things like that are like they're almost without using that you know the, the meme phrase it's like they're almost too big to fail to the point where um, and it actually might not even be the phrase that I'm looking for that too much other stuff relies on that. Yeah. If you just let the, yeah, exactly. If you just let the airline industry fail because of, you know, the, of just, you know, allowing the market do what the market does, there may be many other businesses that then right. like can't get their people to, 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 um, where this business meeting needs to take place. And now they're losing money and they need to shut their doors. And there's a domino effect that cascades from that. So I, I do we, understand like certain industries like that. I, I I definitely get. I think that the government just needs to be very deliberate, I guess, about where it is that they spend that money like, mm -hmm. to determine like, you know, which, which businesses are really important for us to, to, to help out and to keep things going. Yeah. Um, I mean, but the subject of businesses perishing, I mean, there's tons of businesses that are fucking booming right now. Yes. Yeah. I mean, all the delivery type businesses, like, um, Instacart, I mean, Instacart, I think recently had like some, uh, some issues with like, you know, feeling like the, the company hadn't really like helped them out enough as far as like hazard pay and yeah. giving them provisions to kind of protect themselves. I think they were, um, I don't know if they were actually striking or if they just wrote a, but I know that there was like a, a letter that was written and like signed by a lot of the, the employees working and then sent to like the, the upper management. I don't know what is, I don't know yeah. what, what has changed for them, but hopefully, hopefully that got them somewhere. And for me, like out of principle, the few times I've relied on, I've like, I've used Instacart for the first time in my entire life recently. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've given them like massive tips. Mm -hmm. Like if I, if I'm like, if this person is like, uh, let, let me think how much money is worth me parting ways with for you risking your safety. Hmm. And I'm like, hmm. 
Well, it's unlimited. Unfortunately, I don't have unlimited, so I'll give you as much as I can possibly afford to give you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and that's just something that I've been doing out of principle because I recognize that, you know, those people are, are risking exposure. Um, and like at my first Instacart order ever, the person dropped it off at my door. And then when I went to rate them, I saw it was an old man. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. I was like, I am a terrible person. I, I have noticed, though, with, with years of um, spending time like as a delivery driver, there that that is pretty consistent a lot among like w w like days that i've had to deliver in the snow or in like heavy rain and stuff like that you do see your tips go up so it is like it's good that people do have that mentality and i i hope is carrying over to this time um but i i've also you know i've heard stories of people saying like i'm sorry i can't afford to tip you right now because i need to save up for supplies and it's like that which is like well then how about you just don't order any delivery jackass <laughs> exactly yeah and that, and that was actually that was before Restaurants were closed down. That was a tip written on a family going to a restaurant, not paying their their waiter or waitress. That wasn't even a delivery. That was like, I was like, well, that how about you can't afford ridiculous. to work? How you can't afford to eat in a restaurant if you can't afford the tip? Yeah, like how much was it for you to take your whole family out to dinner? Hmm. Yeah. Let's think about this. Um. But yeah, that's that's something that you know is is and you know Amazon. I'm sure shit's going fucking crazy for them. Yeah. Um, they, they hired a lot of new people. Yeah. Amazon's oh, yeah. Amazon's booming right now. Like logistics companies. Plus, I mean, lucky them, oil is at an all time low. A lot of other yep. companies are, are getting kind of screwed because of the oil prices being so low. But I mean, companies like that, like they're they're actually benefiting greatly from it because their margins, I'm sure, have gone up considerably. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, and you know, prime and all that stuff, like I um yeah, uh, you know, UPS is like they can barely keep up right now. Yeah, yep. Um, but you know, it's yeah at least there's some good that's happening you know for for some businesses in some ways i mean i'm sure plenty more people have amazon prime video now too i'm sure there's more netflix subscriptions you know i'm sure plenty more people are like watching hulu exactly yep i i'm sure oh yeah all the numbers are which the other the impact that we're not really discussing which i, I don't really i don't want to get into but the um the yep, internet infrastructure we are we are we are um i'm pretty sure we are oversold what our internet speeds really are whenever there's an like the actual amount of people online that are online right now i think yeah. that you know the yeah like i mean time warner whatever like internet provider you have they budget for a certain percentage of usage at every at like all times and i mean same thing we were talking about with like the just-in-time supply chain where we don't like we don't we don't set anything aside it's like we know we need this much we're going to supply exactly this much and then whenever we have an incle increase in demand Supply doesn't change. It's the same thing with bandwidth right now. We're getting a lot of like internet problems because way too many people are home on the internet. Yeah, uh, I, we were we were actually having a discussion at work about it. I think that one of my coworkers was like her daughter was asking about like um, something being slow or whatever, and she was just kind of like, "Well, I mean, <laughs> we live in fucking Denver, and everyone's at home right now. Yeah, <laughs> this is what happens." Yep. Um, <clears throat> I, I want to I do want to move on to the um this uh, talking about the the legal impact I did find okay so did you hear about the the interesting thing that actually happened locally uh like yesterday or the day before uh no but you expressed so much interest in this during the call that we had I did no research on any of that stuff okay because I knew you were gonna get really deep into it so I was like I'll just let him do that oh I, so I didn't I didn't I'm go too deep here. I'm just going to sit here and listen. I don't, I don't yeah, no, I, I didn't hear about, no, uh, locally, like here? Oh, yes. Shit. I mean, literally, yeah, like, um, I mean, this is, yeah, local news. This was updated uh, ye yesterday, the 30th. There were actually men arrested and charged with violating the stay-at-home order. So there is at least some sort of actual, like, some sort of enforcement that goes on. Um it's interesting. They they were uh, class two misdemeanors, which apparently you can actually be arrested and taken in. Um, so apparently the, these men from outside of the area, even they're traveling from a few different cities. They decided to come and uh, stand outside a like women's clinic and boycott or protest um, abortion, which I I completely agree with people's right to um you know, political uh, uh, demonstrations and right to protest. However, I would say that that is a non-essential right now. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. <laughs> they, they, yes, yeah, so they were charged with class two misdemeanors of non-essential travel in violation of the stay-at-home order. 
And this is the first yeah. like actual example I'm seeing of people actually being and, um, charged. And, and you know, it's like, it seems that each state is sort of like handling, handling all that differently. Mm -hmm. Hear that liber libertarians aren't <laughs> just stoked. Um, they, when, they and seem to be, another thing um, I was reading is that the, the, a lot of governors, they're leaving it up to the local um, smaller areas to, to figure out how that's going to be enforced and, and what they're going to yeah. do. So it's like, even well, though it's like, there's a statewide order, it's like each town and city may have a different idea of enforcement yeah. and what they're doing. There's a whole lot of stuff that police officers do that's completely at their discretion. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that there's certain cases where I guess they're, they're they have to determine like what actually is non-essential. I mean, I would say picketing definitely is, mm -hmm. but you know, um, uh, that's pretty crazy though uh but you know like I, so. I heard like i've heard a lot of like conspiracy theories and stuff like that like oh if there were any time to take total power and that would be it like if it were me i would do it now like wow that's yeah yeah uh there i mean that is the one the one crazy thing is anytime anything big happens there are so many different conspiracy theories that pop up and so much yeah. that people disagree on and and i mean even to the point yeah like we talked about this where we we, we just disagree on facts even at this point it's not even like it's no longer we we have the same data and we're interpreting it differently at this point in in our in our society it's like we are now just disagreeing on what the data is and if 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 your data is valid versus where my data and i got mine from this source and your source is fake news and it's it's I it's think, crazy i think i just broke my chair <laughs> i i hope not That's, that is a nice chair you've got there by the way i like that it's okay oh thanks uh <laughs> I gave my this is this is I kind of like gave myself a, an excuse to buy it because I was like, well, I'm working from home now. I'll be sitting there all the time. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. I, I I mean, honestly, um, I did the same thing for WoW Classic. It was like I know I'm going to be sitting in that chair a lot, and my chair is bad for my back. Like, let's let's get something that's a little more ergonomic and will make me sit up straight. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, rationalizing, you know, once again, supporting the economy there. Yeah. True. Um. Yeah, I just, you know, the thing about, like, government involvement or, like, you know, that one of the, one of the main values, like, historically that it is sort of held dear in the United States is individual liberties. Yes. Um, but, and I think we, I might have mentioned this before, but the, the problem with freedom is that you need to be taught how to use that and how to wield that responsibility um, in the best way. And a lot of us don't really know how to handle our freedom. Um, yeah. You know, like if you give people the freedom to do something stupid, oftentimes they will. Like, you know, riding with a group of motorcyclists into South Carolina um, and we get there and we cross and stop at a rest area. And next thing, you know, there's guys taking their helmets off and like uh, tying mm -hmm. them to their seats or whatever. I'm like, what there's no doing, there's no dude? helmet law there, right? Yeah, and, like, there's no helmet laws. I'm like, y so you're you're only wearing your helmet because you have to because yeah. I'm wearing mine because it protects my head. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like it's not guaranteed actually to stop any injury. It will just mitigate it. Yep, at, at best. So imagine what happens if I'm not wearing a helmet. Like you seatbelt laws. Like you can't trust people to be responsible for their own safety. Yep, exactly. Yeah, which which is kind of sad, but it's just like so. Do we so do we go like all the way with the individual liberties and just let people do whatever it is they want to don't mandate anything um and allow this sort of thing to spread or do we you know decide that maybe there's some things that we need to sort of um we need to mandate that people need to do um and that we need to enforce um and the other thing is is that you know like we're, we're it's not like we're it's not like there's like national guard patrolling the streets with mm -hmm. like you know, automatic weapons or anything like that. Like if you walk outside, they'll shoot you on sight or put a, a black bag over your head. You know, <laughs> not, it's not, not like yet. That's, it's coming though. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, it's, it's not like that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like that individual liberties aren't, com it's not like they're, they're, com they're being completely compromised. Yeah. But sometimes there are periods of time where you just need to kind of like, you know, let things go a bit. Um, I, I really liked your, your example with the helmets though, because like, I, I felt the same thing with the stay at home order. I was, I was already doing this before it was an order. You know, it's like, as soon as, as soon as my too. job 
was letting me work remotely, it was like, okay, well, I'm not going anywhere that's not essential at this point. If I don't have to leave my house for, for my job, I'm going to leave my house to go get food when I need to. Like, and not, I'm saying not like visit a restaurant every day, like go to the grocery store, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, depending on how much I buy. And that's it. Like there's, there's no, I don't see a, a reason to do it other than like, it, other than the want and the, um, the, that feeling we have of like, you know, when it's, a, what is the right term? But when someone tells you not to do something that just makes you want to do it so much more. Uh, I don't know. I think there's a word for it, but it's like, you know, don't push the red button. Yeah. Like you're, you're gonna, there's I'm gonna, a, I'm gonna push it. It's not, um, I don't know if that, I don't know if that falls under cognitive dissonance. I don't think it does. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I know, I know there is a term for it. I just don't know what it is, but yeah, I know what you're talking about that. You know, it just makes people want to do things more when you tell them not to. <laughs> yeah. I read, um, like I read a meme about it. It was like, as soon as, as soon as a governor tells you to stay at home, it's like, that's when Americans say like, no, it's my right to go outside and lick every doorknob I possibly can. Like that's, It's my freedom. Yeah. It's, and it's like, you're still free to do a lot, but I mean, it's not mm-hmm. like, I don't know, man. I mean, I value individual liberty too, but yes. yeah. there's a certain point where like, but I also feel like not not everybody understands how to be free the best way. So yeah, but that dude, that, that's, that's a that's a slippery slope to saying, well, I I know better than you, so I'm enforcing these rules. But like I I, I agree. I just as far as like trying to have a political discussion and find the policy there, it's like that's it's tough to where do you draw the line? It's like I I agree that everything should be free, basically to the point where you're infringing on others' freedoms, and this this is exactly that. If you decide to go outside for no reason and get someone else sick and and injure or 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 end up you know getting someone killed, that is definitely infringing on their freedoms. It is it is no longer just a, a personal thing where where it's a victimless thing. True, yeah, and this is something where the the impact can be much much larger than just you know one individual or two individuals or three individuals because that could like you know over time have a pyramid type effect on multiple multiple people depending yeah. upon what it is that you're doing um so yeah i mean i'm not like t- i'm not afraid that there's going to be some like declaration of like military law in the united states it's it's just not going to get to that there's not enough people being stupid for that to be necessary yeah but hey hey worst case scenario second amendment guys we can totally take those those tanks with our true <laughs> with our hunting rifles that is that is very true <laughs> I love that, like, I, I love that we can laugh about that because we're both, like, we're, we're both, like, fine with firearms. We, we both are, are very, like, positive about the Second Amendment, but realize that it is, like, it's, yeah. it, like it's, it's no longer for protection from a tyrannical government. That made sense in yeah. 1776 or whenever it was written, but that's, that no longer works. When the government yeah. has F-22s and tanks, there's not much, there's yeah. not much you can do. With... Mine is for uh, protection from a tyrannical burglar. Exactly. Yeah. Um, depending on the circumstances, because if they're not right, then I could end up getting in a whole lot of legal trouble. Uh, yep. So there's that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we talked about that <laughs> or, last week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or for fun, shooting at pieces of paper, <laughs> mostly for the latter. Yep. Well, um, <laughs> do uh, I mean, we we kind of we we kind of skipped over two different impact areas that we we have in our notes, but um, the the diplomatic impact, I don't know really enough there to talk about. I mean, I know that it's like that there will be strained relations between companies for what's what's going on. I know I'm worried about just I mean, already our relations with China are not ideal at this point. There's been that like the trade war that's kind of been going on. And I think I think that this is only going to make things worse. But I looked I looked at a little bit of coverage and like a few statements from like the the uh, government here and like the Ministry of State or whatever that there seem to be like a lot of like fuck you china like no fuck you america no fuck you china no fuck you you're trying to defame us like well you should have told us earlier yeah it's like whose fault is it man we didn't know like are you sure you didn't you know it's just it's just silly almost childish i would say yeah and i I would agree with that yeah yeah and i mean and hopefully um i i would hope that it that it's seen as childish by the powers that be and and isn't brought brought into an issue going forward basically i hope that i hope that it's just a temporary thing because you know um you were touching your face way too much right now 
Well, I, I haven't been anywhere. I've been in my apartment. Just one of our smart ass friends that's watching us sent me a text and told me to stop touching my face. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I have these hands have been washed numerous times in the last hour with 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 scalding hot water. The um, I sing happy birthday eight times and I wash my hands. I've gotten to the point where I am now singing all of Stairway to Heaven. So my hand washing has gotten to be about like about 16, 17 minutes, but I, th I feel like I'm doing what I need to do to keep myself safe. I'm sorry. I just, I, again, like I, I, I do like memeing a little bit about this, but like, but no, it's it, fucking hilarious. Of course, people wa wash your hands. Definitely. Um, yeah. the, so the last, the last section of, of impact that we really want to talk about is, uh, the, the social impact, which we, we did talk about the psychological impact. And yeah. I think the social impact plays into that a little bit, but we're more talking about um, the like interpersonal social impact that, that that's going on. And it's, I, I, I feel like it's, um, it's similar to that, that one phrase in Leviticus that people tend to use to reinforce a prejudice that they already have. I think that that's kind of gone on with, um, with a lot of the uh, a lot of the xenophobic ideas and, and shit that has come out of this situation. Yep. People people don't seem to understand the difference between a nationality and an ethnicity. Yeah, yeah. I had a friend yeah. that um like I mean she does hair for weddings and stuff and we we talked jeez, I guess it would have been 3 weeks ago. Um it was it was basically oh, it was the the first day that I was supposed to be working from home. And so it was like the last time I actually went out anywhere and did something that was non-essential. And um, she was talking about working with a client that uh, was, was planning for a wedding coming up soon. And, and the client was of like Asian descent and was like literally had to tell her like, dude, thank you so much for seeing me only like because I'm Asian, everyone else is turning me down. It's like, that's crazy to me. Like that is insane that it's like it, yeah. it turns into like, oh, well, just because of this person's ethnicity, they're more likely to, to I need to avoid them. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be infected. Well, it's like like, it's like I'm I'm pretty sure that they're like the the death rate in Italy is like super high. Are you gonna stop eating pasta? Well, yeah, I like, have. Yeah. Oh wait, I forgot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no more, no more Papa John's because that's so Italian. That is, let me tell you. <laughs> well, Olive Garden is pretty authentic. I've, I've definitely I've stopped going there, but. Oh, I I've actually decided that the word authentic in the in the name or title or subtitle of any restaurant making food from another region is bullshit all the time and I hate it. Um that's another conversation for another day. Actually, we should talk about something related to that at some point. I I want to start a um, restaurant just called like authentic something now and just <laughs> just to rub you the wrong way. Oh yeah, I forgot Ty, you're a <clears throat> keto. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah I, I quit that. pasta a while ago. It had nothing to do with Italy yeah. being, uh, being a hotspot, but yeah. Um, but, and the other thing like with, with the social changes, yeah, I mean, it does seem that a lot of people are like that already like just wanted to have some kind of prejudice against Asian people of any kind, because like I, when I worked at a Vietnamese restaurant, I had mm -hmm. no joke. This was a guy with a beard and a sleeveless Harley Davidson shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll give you a hint. He was not in shape, um, but you already knew that. That was what he, I pictured. Yeah. Me, he said to me as I was working at this Vietnamese restaurant, he goes, Hey, you ain't Chinese. And I kind of looked at him and I was like, um, I'm not Vietnamese either. Oh, and man. they just kind of walked off. It's, it's, the, it's the same thing though, right? V Vietnam yeah, is just like, a section of China. China yeah. is that whole, like you know that? that whole continent. <laughs> it's just, they're all China. Yeah. Japan's just the Chinese Island. Did yeah. you know that? Well, it, but it's just I don't know. So basically, if you're any kind of Southeast Asian, it's like, oh, don't don't do that, don't eat that. Like, but I don't think people people just don't fucking get it. Yeah. Um, yep. And you know, it's like, uh, it, it uh, there have been a few times where I think um, s some of our uh, public figures have slipped and said the term Chinese virus. <laughs> Um, I don't know if slipped is correct, but <laughs> well, I'm just going to give him the benefit okay, of the okay, that's doubt because um, I just I would like to think in my idealism and naivety that. But it's also if they are referring to it as the nationality and the country of origin, then that's not exactly incorrect. It started there. But to be more precise, you sh you could say the novel coronavirus that began in China as opposed to calling it but it's like what do you well, really mean though like well, what it, is like, it that you're trying to say like and not to not to use the the word 
uh, well, I guess it's, it's it's not the word that's off limits, but there's no precedent for calling virus where we found it. Yeah, we, we don't do stupid. that. Oh, like, wait, uh, wasn't there a... Well, there have been a few, but those actually only spread regionally. They never left those regions. Exactly. That Yes, yes. So, yeah. If it was something that, located... Fucking, yeah, yeah, but it's the whole world now. Like, to, like to say virus. that makes no sense right now because it's not just yeah. that region dealing with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, WV1, bro. This is World Virus 1. That's actually, yeah, that actually kind of makes Dude, sense. That's really what we should call that. Hey, people that write history books, oh, if you're no. listening, WV1. That's Hold on. What we should call that's this. not a good thing because they didn't call World War One World War One because that, that implies a sequel. We're, we don't want to call this oh. the World Virus One being like, oh, we know two is going to be next year and it's going to be way better. The budget's going to be w higher. The Avengers are going to show up. <laughs> like, World Virus Two is going to be on fire. <laughs> Chris Evans will be there. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh um, well, yeah, I think that. But yeah, it's. But the other thing is like that. I, I feel like I'm I'm not as polite as I was now. Hmm. I don't hold doors for people. Mm, yeah. You know, like I stay as far the fuck away from people as I can. Um, you know, it's like really weird. I'm like opening. Do well, actually, for the most hmm. part, I never really opened a lot of doors with my hands anyway. Um, but like I'm pushing doors with my back or with my elbows or shoulder or whatever now. Um, I'm I'm really not like saying hello to people because i'm not getting close enough to do that mm -hmm. yeah um and you know like i was like walking to like to my my car and like i walked out of the breezeway of my apartment and someone was walking their dog and i like stopped cold like eight feet away and let them walk by yep and then continue to walk over or like even you know um you know like my dad was saying that he was like he did like a curbside like mm. grocery pickup mm -hmm. and he was just like he tried to be nice but he was like please could you please leave the groceries right there and then step away <laughs> step away from the groceries <laughs> he was like trying to he was like please though yeah well i think i i disagree with the uh, okay it's me me and my uh, my semantic um tendencies but like i, I disagree with the way you said that because i don't think you're being less friendly or whatever it's just that like we to me friendly like we're like th there's the intent there you know like like it's not like you're making the decision to be like oh yeah just fuck people i'm not gonna you know it's like well no it's just the landscape of our social interactions have changed and i think you're still making the effort to be friendly it's just you also want to be safe now, and i think well, safe uh, is more order, more important it takes be, precedent in order to be safe i'm making no effort to be friendly yes okay yeah that's fair that's fair i mean i'm not it's not because i don't want to but because it's just appropriate right now yeah yeah, um, I agree. You know, it's just, and it's at the point now where like I'm gonna have to go in to work in a in a week or so to configure a couple laptops for people, and those mm. are gonna get like wiped down and put in a plastic bag. Yeah, and then I'm going to like you know leave them for those individuals, and then they can come pick them up in a specific spot. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's the same thing. I mean, there's a lot of, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, not it's, and I don't know. Hopefully, I I'm I'm hoping that maybe as a result of this, at least for a little while, hoping that this ends at some point, that maybe we'll be a little bit warmer for at least a little while. Um, well, it, you did hear, I guess, the big news over the past couple days is the, the federal guidelines have been extended at least to April 30th. Yep. So we're looking at, I mean, the, nothing has changed as far as like our shelter in place orders right now, but we, we are looking at probably at least another month of this without without much major changes unless we see big changes in the number of yeah. cases and, and, you know, the data changing. But and, I mean, I would I'm no expert. Um, in fact, I don't believe in the idea of experts, but uh, um, I think that's optimistic. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting because so we hear that the 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 guidelines are till April 30th, but then I hear. Um, any, any expert quote unquote that I've heard talking about it are, they're saying, you know, early June is the best forecast they're seeing. So we're completely ignoring the whole month of May at this point that I feel like it's just kind of implied that the, the guidelines are going to spill over yeah. into some point in May. It just hasn't, that like, hasn't been, been official yet. But. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's some thought that this might end up lasting the entire summer but who knows but you know if you look at any like article basically the journalist latches on to anyone with doctor in front of their name and then calls them an expert yeah yeah uh, mm -hmm. I, I i hate the term expert it makes me sick yeah um, it makes me like wish person, they're like how about how about person with advanced knowledge let's just say that yeah yeah which i mean because it's interesting is an 
there's no such thing as an expert in anything. It's it's not a thing. Well, it, it comes to experience. Like it's just I like more often than not, I will defer to someone who has much more experience in a field than I do, or or with a specific subject. It's like mm -hmm. the word term expert is loaded and strange, but it's like if someone has spelled spent way more time doing something, I'm going to assume that their knowledge of it is is more advanced than mine. Oh well, yeah, but. So the only reason why we think of academics as being experts is because there's no external demonstration they have to give us of their expertise. Mm -hmm. Whereas like you can take tennis or race car driving or archery and you can determine based on what they have to do. Yeah. That they're not an expert because they will screw up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so there's that, like that, objective that, markers there. Yeah. Yeah. And even that, I think that sometimes like the people that really know shit, when you call them an expert, whatever, they'll actually tell you like, no, nah, not, not exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I have um, noticed that the, the smartest people tend to be the most, um, like, uh, humble of their, like their beginning or not beginning, excuse me. Yeah. They're like their knowledge or yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I didn't want to like get into debate into a debate on the term expert, but yeah, the, yeah. that word and that other U word that we said we weren't going to say, um, the ends with an ed that word and the other one are getting thrown around a lot now it's kind of making me sort of tired but I, the problem is is that it's just certain outlets in which you see it is what's bothered that it's, it's it's what bothers me it's the fact that dipshits say it and other <laughs> dipshits allow it well let's see are we um are we at the point where uh, you want to start with some of the the pre-recorded interviews yeah actually i'm kind of uh I'm interested in the people that you interviewed because I I haven't heard any of what they had to say. So yeah, I'm actually I'm excited about this part. Plus, it's cool we get to like just push a button and watch. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna mute my mic. We're just gonna enjoy. So what we have done is we've reached out. We have six interviews with um uh, just a variety of different people, and we asked them the same four questions, and we just want to see what um what's the difference in perspective uh in in the situation we're dealing with. Um, so the first interview we have here is uh, distance interviewing um a mutual friend craig so i'm going to get this pulled up here get this ready to go let's see on oh, there's a full screen view right yeah full screen interface there we go there we go okay all right this is ready and play okay actual recording this time full disclosure didn't hit record the first time and then the second time he used the wrong name <laughs> so here we go uh all right uh tell us your name uh, and a little hey, bit about yourself uh my name is craig i'm from high point oh, north no, carolina they can't talk. and i am a professional musician cool awesome can you tell them where they can find you online email instagram stuff like that yeah, uh, Facebook, my full name is Craig Baldwin. You can find me on there. And my Instagram handle is Craig Baldwin Music. Uh, my email address is Craig Baldwin Music at Gmail. Awesome. All right. So, uh, how severe do you think the threat is to the local and global population right now from COVID 19? Um, well, I. Definitely don't claim to be a scientist or an expert on infectious diseases, but it seems like the people that, uh, that know about these sorts of things wouldn't be recommending us staying away from each other and shutting everything down if, uh, if they weren't pretty concerned. And uh, I guess it sounds like the percentage of people that the disease is fatal for is pretty low, but at the same time, it's so infectious that it's the, the, the number ends up being really large of uh, people that are at really, really high risk. So it's pretty scary stuff. Yeah, man. Very scary. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, and the thing is, is we're, we're kind of looking for people's perspective as like common folks. So it's actually a good thing you're not a scientist in this case. Um, <sighs> How has your behavior and lifestyle changed since the COVID-19 outbreak was declared a pandemic? Um, well, the, uh, the fact that all the bars and restaurants, which is where I typically perform, uh, got shut down. I uh, lost you know, all my income for the foreseeable future. Uh, so, so that's been pretty tough. Uh, the, the initial 
knee jerk reaction of, of uh, it being announced that all the bars and stuff were going to be shut down was, uh, was kind of rough, you know, uh, panic set in there for a minute. And since then, I've just been trying to come up with new and creative ways to uh, continue to make a living from home, doing live streaming on uh, Facebook and Instagram and, uh, and uh, writing custom songs for people. <clears throat> um, but, uh, you know, it's sort of one moment gloom and doom one moment oh i've got an idea you know sometimes things work out sometimes they don't but hopefully uh through all of this we'll be able to come up with new and creative ways to to make money while all this is going on yeah so if you guys want to take part in his services he's already mentioned his facebook on here and you can always email him uh hopefully uh that'll happen a lot more once we're on the other, we're on the other side of all this um so the next question here, um, what impact has this had on your life in general, your well-being, and your mental health? Well, um, doing what I do, I spend most of my time, uh, you know, either at bars and restaurants or, or other venues. So uh, I'm, I see lots and lots of people on a regular basis. So being being at home and not really going out and seeing anybody has definitely been weird. But um, as far as uh, as far as my mental health is concerned, um, definitely some some dark and dreary moments, uh, but uh, trying to remain positive as much as I can, and enjoying some of my peers, you know, live streams, performances from their own homes, and just trying to take comfort in that, and knowing that we're sort of all in this together, and hopefully uh, sooner than later we'll get this stuff cleared up and we can get back to work. <clears throat> Yeah, so this wasn't really one of the questions that we were planning on asking, but I'm curious, just kind of based on some of your answers, are, are you at the point where this kind of feels like the new normal, or do you think you're going to get to that point? Uh, it definitely doesn't feel even remotely normal to me. Uh, <laughs> staying at home and not going out and, and performing has is, is definitely been weird, and it's still weird, uh, and I hope that that doesn't become normal uh, ever. But um the silver lining of all of it may be the, the industry, at least the industry that I'm in and maybe some other industries will find new and creative ways to, to adapt and overcome the uh, complications that exist uh, from having to be at home, you know, through live streaming and, uh, you know, doing different kinds of jobs for people. Like, you know, people want a song written for maybe their spouse or their, you know, somebody they really love or somebody they really hate if that's what they're into uh i um it's just trying to come up with creative ways to do do new things make it work well cool um do you have any uh parting thoughts anything you want to say that i might not have asked you about like regarding the virus and what's going on how you're feeling and what you might have to say to other people about it um Mostly what's on my mind right now is uh, how good it's going to feel when uh, I can have you back over at the house and stick a plasma grenade to your face and blow you to hell. It always goes back to Halo. <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Well, uh, awesome, man. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we really appreciate you, you know, stopping by and, and you know, talking about this. Thanks for this. having me. Anytime. This is fun. And uh, hopefully we can see each other in person sooner than later, man. I would love that. I miss the hell out of you, man. Hey, can you get me Ty's autograph? <laughs> of course. All right. <laughs> does it, uh, this is the one that I could not edit down, actually. It, it, still, it still glitched every time I tried. Um, <laughs> that was pretty, d does it go anywhere from there? That, or, or was that pretty much the end? Oh, you're, you're still muted. Shit. It's so, like I didn't mute myself when I wanted to be. Because did you hear me? There was like, can they hear us? Like, yeah. Oh fuck, they can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the rest of it's just like him talking about how famous you are. It's pretty much it. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, definitely if you skip watch that. that for like an ego boost later. Just you know, watch it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'll save that for later. Um, okay. Next is uh, next up is a, a brief interview that I did with uh, my friend Albert. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. 
no problem. Uh, the first the first question we have is just, um, can you tell us your name and a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name's Albert. Uh, I live in San Antonio, Texas, uh, and I work for one of the big uh, movie theaters uh, here in the city as a manager right now. And I like to play video games. <laughs> nice. Um, how severe do you think the threat is to the local and global population? Uh, it's hard to say. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of information running out right now. I would say that I feel like the amount of people that will actually probably like die, like number wise, is probably gonna be really low. But the problem is, I think the amount of people that are going to be infected by it is going to be so high and it's going to cause such like Trump just announced today that he's making the quarantine 30 more days, like like what we're, most places are doing now. And I think the problem is, is that like, well, I think if we keep up with the quarantine, everything, and we finally get the supplies and stuff we need to all the hospitals, everything, I think we'll be able to keep the death toll down. But the, I think the, the, the problem, the impact that we're going to have is the fact that so many of us are going to be like stuck at home. You know, some people are not going to be able to work. They've been furloughed you know, or they just can't find jobs because like the only people that are hiring right now are like places like, you know, like grocery stores or medical places. And so I think the the big problem is going to be in that regard. I think I'm hopeful that medically we'll get under control, but quarantine might still be necessary as part of that, which I think will be the big problem. I agree. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, the third question, how has your behavior and lifestyle changed since the COVID-19 outbreak was declared a pandemic? Uh, well, I've, I don't remember what week, like when it was exactly declared a pandemic. It was like, what, a month and a half ago, I think, maybe two. I think it was actually, according to what I saw, I think it was the beginning of March. Just in the interest of being correct, it was March 11th. I was not 100% sure at, that, at this moment. So it's really only been about like three okay. weeks or so, yeah. So when that happened, I know our company started to take it a little bit more seriously because here in San Antonio, to be honest, like we just, we weren't getting cases like is that we knew of, right? Um, and even now, like compared to like other big cities, like our case numbers, and at least the rise at which we're being able to test people, like we're not finding that many cases, but that's kind of just the whole, like this kind of like South region of like not just the united states but even just like you know below us in south america is kind of like that mm -hmm. so i know as a company we stayed open longer than almost any other uh, some of the other movie chains but once that happened and once we caught word that some place was starting to slow down and do things we took precautions like in our in our own theater uh like we started limiting the amount of seats that we would sell we would make it so that you couldn't buy you could only buy two seats next to each other so like there was a row of four, uh, six seats, two seats in the middle, like you wouldn't be able to buy, so that, you know, like there was spacing. Um, it didn't really impact my life until the city, has, the mayor of San Antonio about, I guess like a week and a half ago now, uh, said that all non-essential businesses had to shut down. Mm -hmm. And if they were restaurants, they could only do takeout or you know delivery. And as such, the movie theaters, like we were, op I was working that Wednesday and that Thursday we closed. Uh, now I'm one of the people that like, like the stereotypical people now that like usually like to stay indoors and like, you know, play games and stuff when I wasn't working. But I'm not going to lie, man. Like I used to love going to F&M and just, you know, going out and seeing movies and getting dinner with friends. So like that definitely sucks. And it's definitely been a drastic thing. And it sucks the fact that like going to like HEB or the grocery store is like, is it worth getting milk? What if I catch it? You know what I mean? So it's, yep. I know here in San Antonio, it's, it's really slowed a lot of things down. Like it's, it's weird seeing the city like this and such like almost like a ghost town. Yeah. Yeah. It is interesting. Um, all right. So the final question we have number four, what impact has this had on your life in general, your well being, and your mental health? Uh, mental health and well being hasn't really impacted me that much yet. Like, I mean, you know, I, I, like I said earlier, like I kind of usually stay indoors and, you know, you know, play video games with my friends online and like, wow. And like other stuff mm -hmm. to begin with, but it, it definitely does suck. The fact that, you no, know, you know, you can't just go out and just do things. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's weird. Cause like the area that I live in, like we have a bunch of 24 hour stuff around us, like grocery stores and like Walgreens, like you know, every now and then, like, you know, 
you know, I'm a night person. So like at three o'clock in the morning, sometimes I just want to go get you know some milk duds or something. And like now here, the way things are locked down, most businesses that used to be 24 hours usually close around nine o'clock now hmm. uh, with the only things that stay open are like drive through pharmacies at like Walgreens and CVS and stuff like that if they have them and gas stations. And so like I haven't been impacted yet, but, you know, with the stimulus bill, I, I believe being passed and signed, there's a good chance that our company will like, will just like keep paying us for like at least in like another month. Ooh, yeah. So like, I don't technically need to do anything, but part of me, like maybe just like, I might just go get a job like at HEB to stock groceries just to get out of the house, you mm -hmm. know? So like right now it's not bad, but I feel like if it keeps going for like two, three weeks, month, two months, you know, that's, that's what worries me the most. I'm like, I'm fine right now, but you know, it's, it, it's rough. And, you know, you know just, I'm worried about like, you know, what's going to happen with, uh, you know, like my apartment complex, like right now there, you know, it's business is normal, but like, if this keeps going, like, I, think it's, I don't know, I'm more worried about a month or two from now than I am right now. Yeah. Say. Yep. Yeah. I agree. I'm kind of, uh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm a big WoW player, like, you know, so I'm, yeah. I feel like I've been training for this basically since WoW yeah. Classic launched, you know, back in, back in August. I've been, I've been doing this, you know, social isolation for quite a while, but it, you brought up the same thing that I think of too, is like, it is, it's very different when it's no longer an option. When I was staying yeah. at home because I decided to, it's very different than now I literally can't go out to do something when I want to, but yeah. Luckily, t luckily, San Antonio isn't like enforcing it. Like, I, I don't know if it's true. Like, I've heard like some places are like getting really, really strict with how they're enforcing it. Mm -hmm. Like, like places like New York City and stuff, because there's so many people like, like, who don't need to be out being out that just worry that they might use like the National Guard or police force to try and like, you know, crack down on it. I know here, like I said, since our case count is still pretty low, cause like compared, like compared to our size. Mm -hmm. You know, you can pretty much go out and do anything within like normal business hours. Like, you know, anything open from like nine to five, you know, is still like fine. But it, it is getting worried because like, you know, my parents, like I like to go visit them like, you know, every couple of week, uh, every couple of weeks. And I'm like, like, do I really want to risk it, go over there? Because like, I don't know, it's just it's getting to that point where it's like, you know, if, if it keeps getting worse, like it, it is worrisome to see what what might be done to like curtail the, the spread of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, thank you. Thank you so much for your time, man. I really, I really appreciate you answering our questions today. Thank you. Oh, no problem. All right. Um, next up, I'm going to, I'm going to switch back to one of yours next. Uh, let's listen to, let's listen to Sarah. Tell us your name and a little bit about yourself. My name is Sarah Barbary. I'm 27. I live in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I am a graphic designer and the director of marketing and membership for a national trade association. Great. Thank you. So how severe do you think the threat is to the local and global population from COVID-19? I think that's a loaded question. I, I would say that there's a lot of different types of threats um, as far as the actual fatalities involved with uh, the disease itself. Um, I am no scientist and honestly, I'm just taking it as it comes. As it stands right now, it seems pretty high only because it seems to just keep growing. Um, however, I do think there's gonna be a huge effect after the fact whenever this stops, um, just from the economic standpoint. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. And a yes. lot of people have considered that but maybe not considered it quite enough. So um, how has your behavior and lifestyle changed since the COVID-19 outbreak was actually declared a pandemic? So I actually have worked from home um, pretty steadily for like five years now. However, uh, now I am not the only one working from home. Um, it feels weird to not have my own space. Um, it feels, there's a new level. I feel like every day as more and more cases are coming uh, to light, and it kind of feels more and more close to home. Um, I've noticed that I have a sense of guilt with a lot more just everyday tasks that I would have, as in like, oh, if I go to the grocery store and didn't leave with everything that I needed, and I'm putting myself in a position to have to go again, um, feeling not just, oh, the weight of it being inconvenient, but actually feeling, um, like I said, guilt about what could this mean for other people. 
um, and myself, things like getting coffee, um, obviously the broader standpoint of the gyms are closed. Um, there's a lot of things that I would do to occupy my time and stay physically active that um, I'm having to rethink. And I think there's also kind of a lot of guilt coming around in that same way of, am I doing enough, even though the circumstances have changed? Um, wanting to keep up as much of my daily lifestyle as I can, but also trying to be aware of this is unprecedented and there's not really a blueprint of how we're supposed to make it work for us. Yeah. So I'm sure there'll, there will probably be some overlap between the last question and this one. Um, what impact has this had on your life in general, your well-being, and your mental health? Yeah, I think that's the big question, um, especially the last part, the mental health thing. Um, I think that this virus and this um, current global standing right now is going to have huge implications uh, mentally for people. I think it's it has touched every single person in some capacity, just in that sense of anxiety and guilt and things that we're not used to necessarily having to consider in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, I think that, not to be too political, but I think it has opened a lot of people's eyes to can our current standing, can our current day-to-day -day life actually work when it is the fact that, you know, like we're saying, children that now potentially don't have access to meals that they would have in schools. Um, taking away access to people's jobs might also take away their access to health care. Um, there's a lot of things that are riding to this on this and have really come into focus that I think we can't just pretend like it can go back to normal um, after all this, or at least I hope not. But I think my mental health has definitely taken a toll from this. Um, not only staying inside, not being active, all those very legitimate, but pretty obvious things, but um, there's something to be said uh, to be a homeowner, a director for a national uh, nonprofit, a, you know, college grad, and wake up and have no fucking clue what to do or what is going to happen tomorrow or two weeks from now. I am very, very lucky that I'm salaried, um, and I can't fucking imagine for anyone out there in the service or gig industry or anything, um, what that must feel like to have to choose between your livelihood and your life. Wow, that's uh, what well, I think that's the first time anything even vaguely political has ever been mentioned on this podcast. But it's exciting. It's fun. I'm I'm glad you did. <laughs> well, like I said, know. only vaguely though. So you know, right? Of course, deal. of course. Um, um, is there anything you know, else, anything else that you want to add? Maybe like we didn't ask as far as like how you're feeling, what you want other people to hear anything like that. Well, between you and I as just being friends, I'm going to like nerd out for a second. Um, is that it's really interesting to think about the last time something like this happened, Spanish influenza, it was happening during, you know, a war that very much so dominated the history books even to this day. But when you think about something like the plague, how is it that people survived after the plague? Is, is it going to, is there anything to be said for the fact that we are also connected now and just even with our livelihoods, like physical health, but also now with the addition of the mental health standpoint, the fact that something happening in China, an atrocity happening seemingly across the world can now affect us in a way that it hasn't ever before in human history. And I'm really interested to see where that goes. Um, to see what kind of toll this takes. But that's me being a nerd and just thinking about those types of things. Um, but yeah, there's no way to tell what will actually be said of this period um, of time. It, it's truly unprecedented in every single way um, uh, that the word can be used. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, unprecedented, I think, is probably one of the, one of the words that's getting tossed around a lot, but for good reason. Uh, but Sarah, um, thank you very much for stopping by. We really appreciate your time and your perspective. Um, and uh, uh, best of luck to you and your family and all that stuff. I know we live quite a ways away from each other. Um, but, you know, um, hopefully you we'll... I mean, wait, what? I said you too, like, stay safe and your family and things like that. <laughs> and pleasantries and things like yeah, that. And et stuff cetera, that... et cetera. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> I do, I do love the end of that interview. <laughs> it was Dude, great. It's like, 
That is shit that I would never actually say to her, like <laughs> ever. But for some reason, it just came out like, "What do I say now?" Yeah, what, like, what am I supposed see, to say? Did you ever see Talladega Nights, like where he's being interviewed? And he's like, "What do I do with my hands?" Yeah, yeah. Like that's how I was feeling. I was like, I don't even know what to do. But then I said the word we're not supposed to say at the end. Yep. Yeah. She said it twice. You said it once. But then yeah. I mentioned how everyone's tossing it around. It's driving me crazy. Yeah, Lee, yeah, we we did um all all of the interviews pre recorded. It, it was way like logistically, it was a nightmare to try to get everyone on like back to back like during a live call. So yeah, it was it was easier to do it this way. Yeah, first um, time for everything. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, next, okay, we're gonna watch Distance's interview with Mike. I'm excited to see this one. Uh, can I comment a bit on this? Right, so uh, oh sure, no, go for it. Here with uh, um, Mike well, the reason McCurdy. why I oh. I kind of um, asked to Ty if we could do this one was this is this isn't the same questions at all this is just the fact that mike mm -hmm. has he's actually made an effort to keep doing what he was doing before um to try not to let this mess up his like routine and his life too much so it was the fact that i saw mike doing stuff that other people weren't necessarily doing that i thought was cool that is something that we can all kind of learn from whether or not you do the same activities he does i think this is something that good that we can kind of get from him and he gives some good mm. advice at the end when i open up the when i cheat with the last question <laughs> that i'm not supposed to ask i do like that though the, the perseverance of like yeah we're having to change yeah. everything but let's keep the routine let's keep this going yeah, yeah. i like that yeah. all right let's cool. see what he has to say uh all right so uh for this interview i'm here with uh mike mccurdy um so hey mike how's it going man not doing good how are you can't complain about it dude yeah so, uh, tell us a bit about yourself man all right. Well, uh, as, uh, as introduced, my name is Mike. Um, I am married and I have four uh, children. Uh, professionally, I've been working in IT for uh, over 20 years. Uh, I hold my bachelor's degree in psychology and in business information systems. Uh, in addition, I also hold my MBA. Uh, powerlifting uh, has been a passion of mine for over a decade. And, uh, you know, I have intense daily training in the past six years. Um, and then over the past year, I've uh, really started to focus on my diet and, uh, and I found some really great success using the uh, whole food based diet. Um, and which that's allowed me to lose uh, over 90 pounds uh, while continuing to gain muscle mass. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I think I remember you uh, kind of dedicating the whole last year to that. Dude, I didn't know your bachelor's degree was in psychology. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the and he's smart too. Um, so can you, can you tell us a story of what you had to do to kind of get your home gym set up? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, let, me, let me tell you two things um, about uh, kind of the whole process. Um, first was, uh, was, of course, I had to uh, prepare the house um, for, uh, for a home gym. Um, I had a couple things down in the basement, um, and it took, uh, you know, being in the basement, it gets dusty, dirty, you know, it's pretty nasty down there sometimes. And uh, so it took a little bit of time. Uh, my, uh, my wife and kids helped. We did some, a lot of cleanup and, and got the space ready. Um, the, uh, and that was kind of a, a difficult task. Um, I think we all got sick afterwards just from all the dust we're kicking up and stuff. So it was, it was kind of a, an interesting experience there. Um, the second story I want to tell about my, uh, my home gym is, uh, is how I acquired uh, some of the, uh, the, the weights, uh, my, my plates and the bar. Um, so I had uh, been doing some searching on uh, Craigslist, uh, Facebook, you know, uh, any, anything you could find online to try and find weights. Uh, it says with the current times, um, you know, everybody is just selling out of this stuff because we're, we're all trying to work at home um, and, uh, and try to find ways to, to work out at home. Um, and so uh, I was talking to this one guy um, who had some bars and he has plates and, and whatnot. And the day that I went to, or I was, uh, we kind of scheduled a, a pickup of some equipment. Uh, he, uh, he's, was when we got to Colorado, got locked down. Um, and uh, so basically we started getting our, all of our work from home orders and we're not allowed to go out except for essentials. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, I was texting him and asking him about this, uh, the new situations that we're in. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. He, uh, he has a little uh, kiosk at, uh, at a local uh, flea market area. And uh, he's like, just come on down. I spoke to security guards. They're letting us in. Um, you know, I can still, you know, make the, uh, make the exchanges and, and do some purchases. So we're like, great. So I'm like, I'm going to be there, you know, in, in like an hour. Um, just because he, he said he had other people going. And, and I'm like, I need to get all this stuff I can, um, you know, just because it's selling out everywhere. So 
drive down there and as I'm pulling up to they have kind of a driveway with a with a parking lot you know on either side and uh, you drive through a little security booth and as I'm pulling up uh, there's three security guards that kind of come out and swarm the car and they're basically like what are you doing here uh, what uh, you know we're closed uh, you're gonna need to go you know turn around and I'm like uh, you know there's a I'm meeting a, a guy here to uh, to pick up some equipment and they're like are you picking up equipment or are you purchasing equipment uh, because we uh, we were told by someone that you know he has going to have a car or two come by to pick up equipment, and apparently he has a Craigslist ad out, and uh, he's had about 15 cars come through here. So we're at, we're shutting this place down and turning everybody away, and uh, and I'm just like like man, within an hour all this has happened, and I'm just I'm just kind of like okay great you know how am I going to get my equipment? So I call the guy and uh, and I'm like you know hey I'm here I need to get my bar and in uh, some of the plates that we've been talking about. And he's like, all right, well, I'll bring some stuff out. You know, he's getting kicked out. And, and uh, so we, get, we turn around and kind of wait in the driveway. And, uh, and, and while waiting there, the security guys, they're, they're all watching us. Another car pulls up. That's a security car. They're just like keeping an eye on us. It's really strange. And, uh, and in, in the process of waiting for about, we probably waited about 15 minutes uh, for him to actually show up and, uh, and get out of the, the little area where they have kind of the flea market at. Um, and by that time, we had several other cars that are here to pick up equipment too. So there's myself and there's three other people, two of them were together. Um, and then one other guy was separate. And, uh, and basically it's, it's kind of like a mad rush to this guy's truck. And, and I'm a big guy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm almost six, three, um, 300 pounds. Um, you know, I power lift, I'm, I'm a big dude. Right. So I, I immediately, you know, walk up to the car, basically claiming my territory, right? Like this stuff's mine. You guys just back up. Uh, let me get my stuff and you guys can have the rest. So, so basically they are, uh, they, they're really like looking at the bars and are super focused on the, on the bars. And, and I'm, and I'm kind of looking at the bars. And I'm like, you know, a bar is a bar. There's, this guy's got four of them in the back of his truck. Like I'm not really concerned about the bars. I'm, I know I'm going to get my bar and I'm looking at all the other weights he has. And he's kind of, he said he's kind of limited and he's got some older stuff and some of the stuff is beat up. It's got rust on it. It's, it's, all, it's all beat up. So basically I'm like, I'm going to grab the good stuff out of here while all these other guys are paying attention to the bars. So I'm in the back of this guy's truck, just piling up all these plates onto uh, on the back of his truck. And I'm like, this stuff is mine. And, uh, and the other guys, I think, you know, we're a little intimidated with, cause I was picking up the plates, throwing them around. And, you know, th these were my plates. Nobody was touching this stuff. And, uh, and, and after they kind of sorted out the bar situation, I just grabbed the bar that was left and, and just started loading up my truck with all the plates that I, that I had picked up. And uh, the guy's like keeping an eye on me because I think he thinks I'm just going to like take off or something. And, 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 you know, I'm bigger than, you know, probably all, all those guys combined that were there. <laughs> and, uh, and so I've loaded all this stuff in the back of my truck and he's just kind of, he like walks over by my truck and is, you know, like, you know, puts his arm up on the truck. Just try, I, th I felt like he kind of was, he was trying to make sure I wasn't just going to take off with all of his equipment. Um, and my wife was in the car at the time too. And she kind of smiled at him and, and he was, you know, he looked super nervous about the whole situation and, and uh, eventually I got all my stuff that I needed. And, and put the bar in the back you know we made our exchanges and stuff so uh so that was kind of the uh kind of the, how i got the bulk of my my plates and, and metal equipment <laughs> so i mean what um what stuff do you have like uh in addition to the bar and the plates that you got like what other equipment did you end up with um so from him i uh i, I wound up with uh almost it was about 375 pounds of plates of various sizes um so 40 uh, 44 pound weights which were kind of cool because they're uh, weeder international brand so cool. um so they're not just a, a you know kind of everything in pounds um it kind of makes for some interesting math that i have to do with uh, with all my plates and stuff now because uh everything's not 45 35 25 it's like 44 35 22 you know i got some some oddball weights in there so it's making me use my math skills right now to, to add this stuff up but um and, and i got that bar and that's that's what i got from him um i, I picked up some other equipment uh i got a bench i got some other uh another uh um, some other weights from another another gentleman but kind of my my whole gym just to, to kind of give you an idea of, of what it looks like is uh the uh i started out with basically a bowflex and and an elliptical um kind of in the basement that was like my initial stuff um, and, uh, and, and later on, uh, I got a, a squat rack off Amazon that my, uh, my wife had actually used for a yoga swing. She was, uh, was doing some yoga stuff with that, uh, you know, and, uh, and unfortunately for her, I decided to uh, confiscate that and, uh, and it's, it's now it has become part of my, uh, my home gym in the basement. So, um, so I have the, uh, the squat rack, a bow flex, elliptical, uh, later added a stationary bike. 
Um, and then just uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I got the, uh, you know, a regular flat bench. Um, it's adjustable so I can do incline, decline, you know, all that sort of stuff with it. Cool. Um, so I have a lot of different, uh, you know, pieces that I've kind of been piecing together in my, uh, in my gym at home. Um, and then, uh, let's see, uh, and I did mention there was a stationary bike in there too. I, I don't know. I got, I got so much stuff now. It's, it's kind of hard to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can't. As a, a guy like you, I, I, I could just see you like picking up the bow flex and like arm curling it. <laughs> like <laughs> well, I don't yeah, know what you else know, you would do. So, so here's the thing, right? So, uh, so the bow flexes, like they get a lot of negativity from, uh, from the kind of lifting community. Well, yeah. and, and I will absolutely <laughs> tell you, they're not for power lifting. You're not going to gain big time muscle mass. Um, but what I've kind of found is it's a good supplement for the bar, for the bench, for the squat rack. Um, Cause I can do some things, uh, you know, with like resistance training, some, uh, you know, shoulder extension you know, uh, shoulder, uh, lateral raises, front raises, um, you know, some curls and stuff like that, the flies that, that, you know, some things you can't really do with the, uh, with the barbell. So it kind of, you know, it kind of fits in as kind of a supplementary thing, you know, so I, I got some good use out of it. Um, they're super cheap if you buy them used, which is, uh, which is another really good thing. Uh, brand new, they're way overpriced, <laughs> but, uh, but used, you can get them, uh, you can get a good deal and, and it can do some things with it. You can't do on just a squat rack. So, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's got some good supplementary value to the, to the real gym. Well, if you weren't thinking about buying a bow flex before, <laughs> then, <laughs> no, I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll find one on Craigslist. Won't have as cool of a story as you, I don't think. So do, do you think that the, that the lifting is kind of like helping keep your spirits up during the kind of pandemic thing we got going on? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, you know, and I wouldn't just, uh, limit lifting as something that kind of helps keep your spirits up. I think that any kind of exercise, whether you're walking around the block, you're, um, you know, gardening in the backyard, um, you know, just doing anything that's active, uh, is something that is, uh, extremely helpful to, uh, to kind of keep your spirits up. Um, and, uh, and, and, and just for, you know, keeping the routine in your daily life. Uh, everybody's lives right now have just kind of been thrown into turmoil and uh, you know, we're working from home. We're figuring out how we're going to work out. How do I go buy toilet paper? Like it, things are just out of control. <laughs> and, uh, and so having stuff like this in your life that you can keep things as routine as possible. Um, yeah. I think is huge for just for your sanity, for just keeping your general, you know, spirits up, like, you know? Yeah. I, I guess it's just about, cause you know, you have a specific thing that you do. I guess it's just about figuring out how to keep, something that you feel like you can't do before like whatever things you have to kind of get to yeah do. yeah absolutely yeah. so what is it about weightlifting in particular that makes it something that you put so much effort into being able to do during this uh, coronavirus pandemic so uh yeah uh, for me weightlifting i mean it's it's you know it's part of my lifestyle at this point um it's something that i do every day uh you know as much as i brush my teeth or uh, or do my meal prep you know it's it's just so integrated into my daily life that it it's it's not just a routine it's not just something i kind of do from you know from time to time to try to stay in shape it's it's it just means a lot more than that to me um it's uh it's more than like i said just physical strength it's for mental health as well um, the, uh, you know, with the pandemic is changing quite a few things, uh, about our lives. And, uh, and, and once the gyms were closed, uh, you know, I was kind of like, I was nervous. I was like, man, what am I going to do? Cause it just, it does so much for you. It, it's, uh, you know, it relieves for me, it relieves stress, it relieves anxiety. Um, you know, it just helps me kind of function uh, just a little bit better, you know, than I would without it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, when the, when the gyms shut down, um, you know, two weeks ago here in Colorado, it's, uh, you know, it could have been easy to just be like, you know what, I'm just not even going to continue it anymore, but, and, uh, and just take a few months off, you know, cause it's just, how am I going to do this in the, in the current state? But, you know, in, in doing stuff like that, it's just, you, your routine changes even more than it already is. Um, you're going to fall into bad habits, you know, uh, that, uh, things that you, you know, bad habits you had before sitting down watching TV all day, you know, deciding like, you know, should, you know, I'm just going to watch the show. Am I going to go work out or, you know, it's, it's just, it, the routines just change so much. It's, it's hard to keep that, uh, keep that lifestyle going. So it's, it's important to, you know, to keep these things going like this, like for me, for lifting and, you know, for someone else, it may be, you know, going on a bike ride. It may be, you know, running, jogging, whatever it is, just to stay active, you know, keep that healthy lifestyle going, um, you know, with, with whatever means necessary. 
Well, Mike, uh, we appreciate your time, buddy. Um, is there anything else you want to say just about the pandemic in general? Anything you want to say to people that you think might be good for them? Anything you want people to know? Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just crazy times right now, man. Everything is changing in, in our lives. And, uh, and, and the, you know, the biggest thing I think for me, and I think that's, you know, going to be good for anyone is to try and maintain the routine, keep doing what you're doing, you know, keep, uh, if you, if you, whether it's hitting the gym, whether it's, you know, whatever else it was, bring that stuff in your home, get, uh, you know, get everyone on board with it. Um, continue that lifestyle. Cause it's, it's, uh, if you start dropping those daily routines out, it's just going to make things difficult further down the line. And it's just going to compound and get worse and worse and worse as you go. So, you know, try to keep as much as you can into your routine um, as we all get through this. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll all come out on the other side and, and, uh, you know, we're going to be better off. Cool. Well, once again, uh, we really appreciate your time. Um, thanks for dropping by and talking to us, man. Yeah, uh, absolutely, man. Uh, anytime. Give me, give me a shout. That was a, that was a really good interview, man. I like, I like what you did there. Um, this is okay. So this video is going to be a little different. It is the same questions that I posed to him, but uh, we did not actually do it as an interview. I just sent him the questions and he recorded his answers. Um, he also works as a videographer, so it's going to be probably heads, heads and tails in quality above uh, the other ones here. So he may just blow everyone out of the water, but uh, this is um, the answers from my friend, Kevin. Hey guys, my name's Kevin Putnam. I own a local business here in Greensboro called Click Media. We do a bunch of work with a bunch of local businesses around here for their marketing, their advertising, uh, um, things of that nature, photography, videography. Um, we do a lot of social media management, things of that nature. I love Greensboro. It's true, I'm actually not from here, I'm from New York. I moved down here and I fell in love with Greensboro immediately. Always defend it. I'll always defend it. So the coronavirus or COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, I think poses a pretty big threat locally and globally. I don't think it's reached us quite yet, um, but I know New York's doing pretty bad. I think it's going to take a huge toll on our local economy as well as our morale. I mean, you can already see like a lot of businesses aren't going to be make, making it back out of this, and I, I think that's incredibly sad. So I think, yeah, I think the threat is, re is really imminent, and I think it's, it's getting closer and closer, and I think there's a, still a lot of people that aren't taking it seriously as they should. So my lifestyle has changed quite a bit. I am a very outgoing, outside kind of person, and now that it's nice out, finally, I'm stuck in the house. That's not something I'm usually used to. I'm usually out and about, um, at least downtown, you know, doing, doing business down there or, or at least being out with my friends and, and doing something uh, active outside besides sitting in the house and doing nothing. It's a huge impact on the way that I like to live my life, but I do think that these precautions are absolutely necessary for the future. I don't think that I took it as seriously at first uh, just like I think a lot of us just didn't think it was going to be as bad as it, as it turned out to be. Um, like I said, we're not affected here yet, but there are places in the United States that are affected. And obviously there's other countries in the world that are affected greatly. I think we should have acted faster. Um, I think the information should have been allowed to the public a lot faster than what it was and treated more severely by the people in charge. This has impacted not only my business, um, but it's also Im impacted me per personally. So I have depression and I have anxiety. So being stuck in the house and not being able to get out and, and do the things that I want to do has is can affect my mental health. Luckily, uh, I've been pretty good about exercising. I've been pretty good about you know taking walks with the dog and things like that and getting out as much as possible while also taking precautions about um, what I'm doing. So I've been able to, to keep my, my spirits up and my morale up. Um, and my roommate as well, he's, he's been here through the whole thing with me too, so it's been, been quite easy for us to just hang out. At least, at least I'm not alone, which I know a lot of people are, which I think that would affect me greatly if, if I was alone. So thank God I've, I've kept up my spirits uh, with the help of a friend and as well as keeping myself active and, and, and motivated. I think that's the most thing, the most important thing. I think if we treat this like the world is still going on, and we, we feel like our life is on pause, um, that it'll affect people mentally more so. So my advice to anybody is that thing that you wanted to learn, um, that thing you wanted to start working on, 
whatever it is, um, if you need the rest, take the rest. Um, but if you want to do something, keep yourself moving. Find a hobby, find a new activity, find something you want to learn, a puzzle, anything. Um, just keep, keep yourself active, your mind active, and, and, and your body. I, I would def definitely say wor working out at home, just even calisthenics is, is a really, really good idea. I hope that the United States looks at this and, and uses it as a reason to change the things that we need to change in this country. And I'm not going to get all political, but I, I, I really hope that this is an eye opener to um, our government and the people that live here. I think that's super important. Thank you guys for having me on. Uh, this is awesome, awesome opportunity. I love you, Greens, bro. I love you, everybody. Love you, mom. Bye, guys. All right, and we have, um, I believe, one final interview. Uh, this is uh, Distance Interviewing James. So tell us uh, your name and a little bit about yourself. James Kelly. Uh, my background is in engineering, uh, chemical and biomolecular from Georgia Tech. Been working for seven years in uh, production, and uh, I'm all about manufacturing. That's me and projects. <laughs> Great. So how severe um, do you think the threat is to the local and global population from COVID-19? You know, it's, it seemed like two weeks ago or so, I, I kind of thought it was going to be really terrible. And I'm not saying that I don't think that right now. Uh, but it, it, when you're looking at things like mortality rate, and you heard a couple weeks ago that it was might be one or 2%, and it was targeting, you know, some of the older folks, let's, let's say boomers, buzzword there. Uh, it may not be that way, it seems like, or it may be that we're hearing out of the, you know, kind of U.S. news that it's, uh, it, it, I don't want to be sound like a conspiracy theorist, but it sounds like the, uh, it sounds like people are trying to say like, oh, we got some younger folks that are dying of this. But, you know, when they're saying that, it's like, you know, are you, are they 20 and 30 or did you have one or two 20 or 30 year olds get sick? Because that's totally normal. Um, I'm still thinking it's a lot of the 65 plus are, are uh, going to get hit by this hard. I do think that uh, 100, 200,000 deaths is absolutely reasonable. I think it'll be maybe higher than that. Um, from what I've seen, which, you know, isn't a lot of data driven, although I do kind of go on some of those better sites where they have the, uh, a little bit better sourcing, uh, sources of, of that data. Um, I can't think of them offhand, but, uh, it's just one of these highly contagious things and it's going to hit, it's going to hit pretty hard. I think. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, so Severe, severely transmitting, maybe not necessarily severely fatal, but still plenty of people are going to die. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if, if influenza, I mean, and I, I know you're going to hear probably in the next week or so, probably this week's topic will be influenza. I was surprised it wasn't last week when you're in the sub 1,000 deaths, but 16,000 dead. Uh, I think I read 16 to 19,000 on average dead from influenza in the U.S. every year, right? And so you think, well, you're less than a thousand, but that it's that curve thing that everyone's talking about, right? Um, I, although I gotta say, I'm seeing a lot of people talk about the curve in a completely incorrect way. Um, Cuomo is is unfortunately when he's popping up his graph about flattening flattening the curve, he's got both ends on the same point of the curve, where okay, this is bad, doing nothing, no mitigation, and then we're here but the ends are different. Well, that tells me, okay, well, total cases will be less, right? I don't think that's the case. I think it's gonna be probably around the same. It's just gonna be a matter of limiting, you know, based on government intervention or mitigation that it's going to just kind of broaden it out. And then over here, it's gonna, you know, you're just going to see more cases later. It's going to be a slower process. It's going to be three, four, five months. And then six months from now, seven months, eight months, you'll see, you know, you probably won't hear about it in the news anymore, but there'll still be cases. It's not going to go away. 
Yeah, yeah, that was probably of the people that we, we've interviewed going to be one of the more um, statistically driven answers. But hey, you're an well, engineer, my background, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> which is good. I mean, we're glad. That's why we're interviewing different kinds of people. Um, all right, so I guess we can probably move on to the next one. Uh, how has your behavior and lifestyle changed since the COVID nineteen outbreak was actually declared a pandemic? So, what day was it declared a pandemic? What was that? Probably. A week and a half ago, you think? Uh, yeah, I think so. At least your question, the though, um, we have been impacted um, uh, financially. Right now, no. You know, Katie and I are still employed. Um, it's it's mostly just impacted is is we have made the concerted effort over the last two weeks. As you know, I've been out of out of the office, been working from home, uh, killing it here. Actually, <laughs> been pr quite productive here without a lot of interruption. Um, but yeah, we're staying inside. Um, we go out on the back deck and hang out there to get out, you know, some vitamin D and, uh, we go to the grocery store, just only one of us when we need to. Um, we kind of, we're already a Costco family, even though it sounds ridiculous for a family of three. So we've already kind of already had all the essentials for, you know, to cover us for a couple months. So we're de certainly not going out and stocking up on anything, but other than that, Really not a lot of change for us, I'd say. Yeah, um, I think that's kind of the way that it is for a lot of us now, that's not really changing a whole lot. Um, and there will probably be, and I've said this to the other people I've interviewed, that there will probably be a little bit of overlap between that question and the next one. Mm -hmm. um, what impact has this had on your life in general, your well-being and your mental health? So my well-being and mental health, uh, I, I've been more affected by it. Um, I, I think it's been dampened for me because early I was panicking a little until I started seeing the data come out of China about uh, one of the early stats I looked for was the first thing I was concerned about was, you know, my daughter getting sick and, you know, she's two, she can barely take any medicine for anything. So but once I started seeing that it's really not affecting young people, like really young people, children, that was a complete sigh of relief. And I thought, and then especially when it, when I was looking at some, some, some data, whether it's valid or not coming out of China, it was, you know, twenties and 30 year olds aren't going to get the fatality rate is extremely low. I thought, okay, I'm, you know, I'm okay. So my mental state was after that point has been pretty, pretty solid. Um, so really, to answer your question, it hasn't changed me so much just because of that fact. If I didn't have that, I don't know what I what I think. I, like I said, I started panicking early, but and that probably would have worn on me pretty quickly, especially since I have to rely on other people. I can only imagine the older folks having to rely on other people to do something. And Katie and I have made a decision that, you know, we're not selfish. We're going to do what we need to do, even though we probably could ride the crap out of this thing. Uh, probably, <laughs> knock on wood, but uh, we're making the concerted effort to, to do what we can to contribute to the flattening the curve, not certainly don't want to infect anybody. Yeah, understood, man. Uh, is there uh, anything else that you'd want to say or anything that you'd want people to know or think about that I haven't asked about? Let's see. There's a lot of things I want to say about it. I don't, if you're focusing on the media, obviously this is the only thing the media talks about nowadays. Um, you're going to hear some really terrible things from people doing certain things. Uh, there's a lot of panic driven this or that. You're going to hear about ventilators. You're going to hear about all sorts of stuff like that. I don't think anybody's out there that wants to hurt anybody. People will make really bad decisions on and not understand how to help the situation and maybe certain people are in power that you know are not capable of making good decisions in that regard um but you know this is one of those things i would just say hopefully if we can kind of get everyone on board with doing the things that the world is telling us not just our own government but just you know kind of stay at home self-isolate things like that be cognizant of that be observant um just you know 
good luck to you. But otherwise, it's a it's a bad situation. Um, try not to fret about it. Again, it's, I'm in the lower age group, so I don't think I have a lot to think about. Um, but you know, I hope I hope people understand that. And I, you've heard this a lot on the news, but I hope a lot of people understand that your actions you're never going to see what they could do. You're never going to know if you infected someone. You're never going to know. You're probably never going to know those things, but just know that that's how communicable, you know, disease and, and, and viral spreads can work, right? Is that you, you infected someone two weeks ago because you, even though you felt fine, just, you got to know that. Do the thing that's, you know, when you're feeling good is when you need to start doing some of those activities where you stay at home and just don't, you know, use wipes and things like that if you have to go out um stay the six feet apart and all that stuff but just just know even when you're feeling good you gotta you gotta do those things because if you're not feeling good it's, it's already too late you know and you're hurting people could be hurting people yeah well cool james uh thanks a lot for stopping by man we really appreciate it um and uh you know good luck man i uh, hope i see you again uh sooner than later um, and once again, thanks a lot for your time, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It, it, it made me laugh a little bit. As I was editing that one at the end, when you're like, hope I see you again. Like for a second, before you said <laughs> sooner than later, I was like, man, that just went really dark. I was like, oh, okay, never mind, never mind. He's, we're coming around. But yeah, oh, that was- no, Lee, ours is like, we, yeah, we're past that. It's complicated face. Um, but yeah, you, you can tell that I'm really hoping that I see all my friends sooner than later. Yeah. I keep saying that. Yeah, I um, I I definitely I I feel it though. I mean, it is like it is kind of weird being being this isolated and literally not having the ability or not having the the option to go out and 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 meet up with friends and and have some of that social interaction. Um. Well, what is the uh? We're we're done with all the interviews. What do you have any? Do you have final thoughts for us? Is there anything we need to circle back to that like that those sparked uh sparked something you wanted to talk about or? Uh, I mean, not really. I think that a lot of it was, uh, the, the one thing that I didn't mention before that, I mean, that you heard Mike and, uh, who was the second interview that you had? Uh, Kevin. Yeah. Um, that Mike and Kevin both kind of said was, uh, the, just like keeping things like the way that they trying to keep your routine up. And, you know, there was a period of time, like for like the first week or so I was like, you know, drinking too many beers in the afternoon, like eating a little too much, not really exercising the way that I needed to. <laughs> and, um, you know, like I ended up kind of like, you know, being kind of sick now, which is not fun. Uh, I mean, my throat's killing me. My, my body's pretty achy, a little bit of head congestion. And, you know, there is one thing now that I mentioned being sick that um, we don't, the data that we have for, um asymptomatic people we basically don't have any yeah because i'm in we the, don't, we in don't the have position, enough tests to find them right now yeah i'm in the position where one of my coworkers was like are you are you concerned you have coronavirus i said well i mean worst case scenario i got a mild case of that yeah like best case scenario i got a real bad cold i mean because yeah. from like almost everything we've heard the the first symptoms you you feel are normally respiratory w with a coronavirus and, infection and, correct and i can tell you i have been like mouth breathing a lot and like actually breathing kind of weird like mm -hmm. not like to the point where i have to because i was actually looking at diagnostic criteria and most doctors will they'll they'll diagnose severe shortness of breath as someone not being able to finish a sentence without taking a deep breath in okay okay so like obviously i can do that but it like it does feel odd but I feel like I always have felt my breathing has been sort of heavy around this time of year because of allergies anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at my throat, dude, it looks like hell. Like it's bad. I'm, it, it looks like strep throat, but mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to go anywhere because if I do, if yeah. I get exposed, I have a comorbid, right? There's already something else going on. Exactly. Um, yeah. And if for whatever reason this somehow does end up that I actually have the thing, like the last fucking thing in the world I want to do is go out and risk, you know, getting other people sick. And I think there's a lot of people that maybe have mild symptoms that just haven't gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's me. Like, I'm like, I don't have a fever, even though like apparently not everybody gets one necessarily. Mm -hmm. But it's just that for me, it's, it's more valuable to stay put. Like, because whatever I have, nobody needs to get it. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, because I don't either a want like I don't either a want to give somebody the thing if I have the thing, which is not doesn't seem likely to me at this point. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to give somebody something that will make their immune system more vulnerable in case they are exposed to the thing. Yeah, exactly. That's I I think that you're handling it in in a, a good way. I think you're you've yeah. got a you've got a good thought process with it. Yeah. But I am pissed off that I'm sick. Understandably, yeah. Being sick sucks, man. Well, yeah, I'm um, what pass are, right out after this. <laughs> what are the uh, what are the final thoughts this week? Oh, the quote. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a quote, correct? No. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, we already disc we discussed it. Get me every time. I know. <laughs> yeah, I've got the quote um, literally in front of me. I was just gonna read it if you yeah. trolled me too hard, but <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this one is uh, it's by a, a Middle Eastern author uh, who is more or less an unknown author. Um, from a, a specific book. Um, so, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. That is going to bring us to the end of another episode of the Metacast podcast. If you've enjoyed watching this on YouTube, why don't you hit that like button, subscribe to keep up to date with everything we do, and comment below and let us know um, what you're doing differently uh, during this, these, these interesting times. If you're interested in further taking part in the conversation or even being a guest on a future episode, you can join our Discord. The link is in the description down below. And don't forget, we will be live next week, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Thanks, everyone, for listening, and be safe out there. <laughs>